Oh my gosh, I do this every time. <laughs> okay, microphone is on. Thank you. Um, hi, everybody. Sorry for... I always do that with the microphone. Yay. My day is going good. I admittedly didn't get a much as much sleep as I would have liked, um, but I had some matcha this morning, so <clears throat> should be good. Gonna let people slowly file in here. I know sometimes the notifications take a moment, but I feel very proud of myself. I was like actually prepared for the live stream this time in the sense of um, like having the thumbnail and the setup and everything was like went smoothly. I feel like I'm always like rushing um, for the time frame, but this time I was actually like a little bit more leisure, which is nice. Hi, hello, hello. So, <clears throat> As I promised with no longer doing the monthly live streams, um, or sorry, not monthly, uh, monthly favorites uh, sketchbook live streams, um, we are actually going to be using a different medium this time. So I am actually going to sketch live with you. I know that sketching, I always like get like in performance anxiety about it, but I think the more I do it, the easier it'll become. And I know that watching me sketch is really helpful for you guys. And I'm actually going to have like the reference photo up. So if you want, you can sketch along with me. Um, and as the thumbnail, my very fun thumbnail suggests, I'm going to be drawing some K-pop idols today. I will be drawing my personal, uh, some of my personal K-pop biases. Um, if you're not a K-pop fan, don't worry. Today's live stream is not going to be exclusively talking about K-pop, but that is what um, I will be drawing today uh, and painting. I'm going to, I'm going to be bold today and I'm going to draw, I'm going to sketch on camera with you guys and I'm going to do some painting, hopefully. Um, so I busted out my, <clears throat> my Paul Rubens watercolors here. Clearly never clean my palette. And then um, I also have the, I always forget the name of this. This is like a Prima, Prima something confetti. I don't remember. Um, but yeah, the reason why I pull this one out usually with this Paul Rubens is because <clears throat> specifically, I love that this palette has this like beautiful cyan and magento, which are both colors that I love using. And the Paul Rubens set just doesn't have either of those colors. So I like using them together. And of course I have my little pre-made swatch thingy here of the Paul Rubens. Also have my custom Craftimo paintbrushes here. They are still available. I should have the link in the description if you haven't picked up a set yet. And got some water. I'm, I have some colored pencils here on hand as well, just in case I decide to throw in some colored pencils as well. And of course my favorite Prismacolor Cold Erase color pencil. Oh, the one thing I actually I just realized forgot is a kneadable eraser. That is very important because I do a lot of erasing um, and I got my sharpeners. Let me go grab the kneadable eraser just one second. <clears throat> I don't know why my throat is all like <clears throat> congested all of a sudden. Sorry for my clearing my throat noises. Uh, what's something you're proud of doing slash getting accomplished this week? Ooh, um, I finished um, or I packed all of my Patreon rewards and sent them out yesterday uh, for the month of February. So. I feel like the past couple of months I've been late on those, so I really feel good about actually getting them done right at the beginning of the month. And uh, did you just start? Yes, I just started. We don't have anything on the page right now, so don't worry. Um, hi, yay, haven't been able to catch a live in a while, but I couldn't miss this one. Hope you're doing well. Yay, I'm glad you're able to make it. Um, yeah, I'm doing good. I got woken up by some birds this morning. So I ended up waking up way earlier than I wanted to, <laughs> but it, you know, it is what it is. Um, cleaning your palette is for 
<laughs> for weak babies. We keep our palettes messy like men. Seriously, honestly, I find having the dried up paint from previous paintings, like, I don't know, I just, I think I hate wasting any amount of paint if I can help it, so I just reuse it all the time. Do you have a favorite watercolor brand or set? I just got Kuratake watercolors and they're my first nice watercolors. Oh, nice. I have the Kuratake watercolors as well. I haven't used them in quite a while. I have a number of YouTube videos using them, but I think my favorite watercolor brand, probably Daniel Smith. I don't have a set. I just have individual tubes that I like squeeze out, uh, but they're like really beautiful. They are very expensive though, so. Um, Yay, my first I'm a Wonder live stream. Oh my god, welcome! We have a lot of fun here. It usually starts out pretty chill and normal, and then it increasingly gets more and more chaotic and un unhinged. Uh, so you have been warned. Um, <laughs> but I hope you're ready for a good time, because I usually stream for like three hours minimum, so it's, yeah, we, we have a good time. I got the Crafted More brushes for my B-Day in December, but I still haven't used them because I'm feeling so uncreative lately. Aww. Well, I'm so glad that you received them. That's such a nice gift. I hope that when creativity strikes that the brush set will be uh, a nice little treat for yourself to use because I really like them and they look adorable. Plus, I'm just realizing, like, with the Paul Rubens watercolor palette, like, hello. So cute. Hey, yay, here for the beginning. Yay! Love, love that you guys get to go on this chaotic journey with me. Because sketching, honestly, it takes me a while to get into it. And I made the mistake of not doing any warm-up sketches yesterday or today. So it's going to be... Actually, maybe we should do... Maybe we should do a warm-up sketch before we start. Perhaps? That might be a good idea, actually. I'm also using the smooth paper side of this. Um, if you're familiar with this Arteza watercolor sketchbook, it's interesting because one side of the page is kind of smooth and then the other side is more textured. And I'm gonna be using watercolors today, which should mean I should use the textured side, but I'm kind of like thinking I wanna use colored pencils too. So that's why I'm gonna try and use the smooth side. But yeah, this sketchbook is really close to being done. I'm so excited. Like it's been a long, I think I started the sketchbook in 2019. And so it's gonna be a very, very juicy sketchbook tour when we finally finish this bad boy. Um, I was actually about to go to sleep, but you know what? I'll pull out my sketchbook too. Yay! Oh my god! Well, I hope that I don't cut in too, too much of your beauty sleep time. Okay, let's... I didn't prepare something to sketch to do a warm... You know what? No, we're just gonna, we're just gonna jump into it. I feel like my live streams, I never get anything finished because I just take too long. So let's just... Leap of faith, we are using pencil today, so I can actually erase if I want to. Leap of faith. Um, should I have done a warm-up sketch? This will be the warm-up, I guess. I don't know. I'm second-guessing myself. No, I think I will do a warm-up sketch. Hold on, let me pull up, okay. Who, who to pull up for a, let me just, So the thing is, I have to have something in advance. I'm sure I have something on here. But how has everyone's February and beginning of March been? I, as some of you might know, just came back from Emerald City Comic Con in Seattle last weekend, and it was my first time tabling at a US convention, which was quite cool. It was so nice to like meet so many um, followers and people who have been uh, watching my channel for a long time. Let's pull up my, my OG, 
my OG bias. Oh my gosh. Jungkook from BTS. Okay. Let me now pull it up for myself. <laughs> this is truly a live stream. Seattle I've always wanted to go I'm a foodie and the Pike Place Market is supposed to be amazing yeah Seattle was really cool um Pike we did go to Pike Place Market unfortunately the timing of when we went was like every time we went it was like everything was starting to close so we didn't actually get the chance to eat much at Pike Place but the food in Seattle was really good like we had a variety of things we got Mexican, Vietnamese, Chinese, um, sushi, and all of it was really good. But yeah, I've heard the clam chowder in Pike Place specifically is like the thing to get. Unfortunately, I didn't get the chance to do that, but maybe I'll get the chance to go back to Seattle at another point. How was the journey of getting all your work to Seattle and the setup? That was something I was extremely worried about. Um, oh, before we start, I'll just let you guys know that I'm going to be using, for the warm-up sketch here, we're going to be using the Zebra Mild Liner Highlighters for like a rough under sketch, and then I'll use probably my ballpoint pen, my Bic ballpoint pen, pen for sketching. And then we will move on to some portraits with, uh, when we do paint, some painting. But yes, so getting my merch to Seattle. What a lot of people do, and what I end up doing, was shipping a lot of it in advance to the hotel. And so that way you're not having to carry everything by hand, which, or like, you know, in your suitcase, which would be so heavy. So yeah, the just making sure that I gave myself enough time in advance to so that everything would arrive on time so of course i had to ship the pack and ship the merch um what I, I think i gave myself like two weeks ish in advance um so that it would arrive before me and same with some of my display actually no all of my display because it's just like too much stuff to have in my suitcase so that was, that ended up actually working out fine. Um, the hotel just hangs on to it for you. And uh, we just had to make sure we told, told, told them about it in advance and in the address line when we were ordering the stuff to say our name and our um, check-in date. I'm sure every hotel is probably slightly different, but it's a pretty common practice for people who do conventions um, to like have their stuff shipped to the hotel. So you just gotta call them and let make sure they know. But yeah, so that ended up being okay. On the way back, I didn't wanna ship anything. So I ended up putting it into my suitcase and it ended up actually being too heavy initially so I had to carry some of it in like a tote bag but yeah overall though actually went relatively smooth thankfully my March has been kind of hectic lol going to be moving to a new city on Monday same state though just about 30 minutes away and still haven't finished packing oh my gosh well, at least it's the same state. That That's helpful. I know, yeah, moving and packing is such a nightmare. I'm very glad to have not had to move too much in the past number of years. Um, and I hope I don't have to move anytime soon because, yeah, moving is such a headache. I hate it. So Godspeed. I hope everything goes as smoothly as possible for you. February was okay. Beginning was nice. Um, not much... With, but with spring coming around the corner, riding a major spring cleaning wave and motivation to get my life together again. Oh my god, good for you! 
I really should do some spring cleaning, but I hate cleaning, <laughs> so I don't know if that's actually going to happen anytime soon for me, but I am excited about the spring vibes for sure. I've been listening to a lot of To Us, um, the new Pletus boy group. They have like an EP out, it's like only like six songs or something, but the whole album is just like very like bubblegum pop spring happy-go-lucky vibes, so I've been listening to a lot, that a lot the past couple of days. Also, my January was good. I started taking classes at my local community college. That's amazing! Congrats! That's so exciting. I think I might have drawn his eyes slightly too low, but let's see. This is why we do a warm-up sketch, because I'm feeling rusty. I haven't really sketched since before Comic-Con last weekend, so yeah, very rusty. Uh, what's the coolest thing you got to check out when you were in Seattle? Um, probably the... I really enjoy... I didn't get to do a lot, admittedly, because most of it was at the convention. But... Oh yeah, let me just... I just realized I should zoom you guys in here a little. Um, yeah, we went two days early before the convention to set up and have some time and then we left one day after to give us a little bit of time to do stuff and yeah I think my favorite probably was the Seattle Art Museum. I posted in my Instagram stories the some of the stuff that we saw. My favorite for sure was um, there was this porcelain room and it was like all these like floor to ceiling um, kind of glass cabinets of beautifully arranged uh, porcelain from various different countries and the room had like lots of mirrors so it just like felt like an Alice in Wonderland through the looking glass experience they had like this beautiful painting on the ceiling um, yeah it was stunning so yeah that was probably the highlight sightseeing wise not again not that we did a ton of sightseeing oh i guess another highlight was we went to this dessert place this matcha dessert place called nana nana's green tea something something um we went there so many times because the matcha and hojicha black sesame desserts there were so good <laughs> and it was so close to the hotel we were staying at it was delicious so that is a big big recommendation from me if you are a asian dessert matcha fan yeah it's my first time moving too oh thank you for the good vibes <laughs> no worries i also couldn't imagine how moving would be with all the art supplies every time i move i donate so much oh my gosh yeah when i moved into this apartment it was wild like the amount of art supplies i have all the equipment i have for my, my business um and stock like it's yeah it was very very daunting um the amount of stuff i had accumulated and like prior to moving here i had been in my previous apartment for like five six years or something so like i had accumulated a lot um in general so yeah it was it was quite crazy but i'm happy to have made the move because def definitely better neighborhood and i like this apartment better in general so one downside is this apartment is technically smaller than my previous one, but there's there's always going to be pros and cons. I've actually drawn this specific photo shoot of Jungkook in this sketchbook already um let me show you it's in the thumbnail actually it's like from his like vamp this like vampire photo shoot that he did i painted it somewhere in here 
I think it was on the live stream too, actually. There he is. So, same photo shoot. <laughs> um, but this was with acrylic inks and watercolor, I believe. So, this time around we're just doing a sketch and then we'll move on to some paints for the other ones, the other portraits. Yeah, the thing about the highlighter, I might be able to, what I end up doing is when I actually go in with the ballpoint pen, I'm probably gonna make the eyes slightly higher, I think. He has this kind of like, oh wait, I don't have to explain it to you. I have the reference photo up for you guys. <laughs> that makes it easier so you guys know what I'm doing. I was gonna have to try and explain this curtain thing, but you guys already know, because you can see the photo. Oh, that's how to us is pronounced. I'll have to listen to their debut. I know, I didn't know either. I was like, T day. TWS question mark and my friend told me it was T to us and then when I was actually listening like paying attention to the songs they say it in one of the songs um, so yeah confirmation it's to us <laughs> they definitely are giving like very fresh young cutesy vibes which makes sense because um, I, I would say that's kind of how 17 started out as well and I feel like young groups um, young boy groups usually go with that concept to start out with. Um, TXT did the same thing, I feel like. And then they sort of like morph into other things as they go along. Not all groups start out that way, obviously. Stray Kids and ATs like, were just like aggressive straight out the gate, which I love them for that. Um, if you like to read, do you think you'd make uh, art book of characters based off description? I notice you make a lot of fan art from visual media and people. Um, I do think that an art book for my work is uh, something I want to do in the future, but I think it would be more of like a general art book of like a collection of my favorite works um, as opposed to something super specific. But an art book is not something that I'm planning for anytime soon just because I, I don't feel like I'm in a place just yet where I like, I don't have like a big enough body of work that I'm like super proud of to put into an art book just yet. My friend keeps saying that she disagrees and she's like, once you start putting all the work together, you'll, you'll probably realize you have more than you think. But yeah, that's just like not my priority at the moment but definitely an art book eventually just not just not yet What do you think of Gensai Tambi watercolors? I'm thinking of buying them, but I'm not totally sure. I've never used before watercolors for gouache, so I think we get an option to tr kind of try both. Yes, the Gansai Tambi Kurotake watercolors, they are slightly different from a traditional watercolor. Um, I do have a number of videos that I've made reviewing them and using them in the past. I admit I haven't used them in quite a while, so I think my opinion of them might be outdated potentially but I do remember liking them they're quite vibrant um, I think potentially what I recall is that they lift a lot easier um, than typical watercolors do if I'm remembering correctly so 
As someone who does a lot of layering, that can be a little bit challenging. But yeah, I would definitely recommend watching a number of different artists um, on YouTube, maybe using that palette and get a feel for if that's like the type of work and style that you might enjoy. Obviously everyone's going to use them a little bit differently, but yeah, it's, um, yeah, unfortunately I haven't used them in quite a while, so I'm not 100% sure. Um, how, how I would feel about using them now. But I do think that like, yeah, they're quite affordable. The pans are quite large. Um, so you get a lot of like, uh, product for each pan, which is great. But yeah, I do remember really liking them and the colors are vibrant. It's just, yeah, it's just been so long since I've used them. I love how much you've leveled up in your live stream setup. Thank you, Bryn. <laughs> it was a long time coming. Um, I'm so resistant to like learning technology. It's like such a hard thing for me to wrap my head around, but yeah, I knew it was time. I mean, it'd been a long time coming cause live stream is something that I've been doing a lot of and enjoying and my it was just so limiting just exclusively using my phone, but I was so intimidated to try to figure out OBS and like, you know, everything. But I knew I wanted to have like a face cam, better audio and like be able to put up reference photos like I am right now so that if anyone is drawing along with me, they can, or at least just like understand what I'm doing. So yeah, anyway, thank you. <laughs> I have therapy soon, so I gotta go, but I can't wait for the next time I can hop on. Have a good day, Tina, and have a good day, everyone. Aw, have a good session at therapy. Um, have you watched TXT's new concept trailer for their mini album? I loved it so much. I watched some, uh, uh, I watched one of them. Is there mul I don't, I don't know if there's multiple, but I did watch one of them. It felt very Where the Wild Things Are meets Wes Anderson. It was very, like, artsy and cinematic. I loved it. Um, yeah, with the, like the Fennec, whoops, the Fennec Fox. Yeah, I'm into it. I can appreciate when, uh, you know, artists want to go a little more conceptual. I think it's very interesting. Happy International Women's Day, by the way. Yes, agreed. Happy International Women's Day to all the amazing women. Oh my God, Jungkook, yes, my OG bias. Hello guys, I've been waiting for this live stream theme for so long. Did I lose anything already? No, you're good, you're good. We're actually, this is like my warm up sketch for the day cause I have not sketched in a little while or drawn anything in a while. So I'm like feeling like I'm, I'm rusty. So I wanna make sure I can do all my boys justice, but I'm very glad to see that you were anticipating this theme. <laughs> it was definitely going to happen sooner or later because k-pop has taken over my life in the best way possible <laughs> which oh my gosh at the convention loved chatting k-pop with everyone so much fun currently i only have bts merch but i am feeling very much inspired and motivated to make more other groups of uh, merch I like artwork, fan art. I think ATs will probably be at the top of my list. ATs and then maybe Stray Kids, potentially TXT. 17 is like one of my faves as well, but there's so many members that it's like kind of daunting. <laughs> so we'll see, but ATs is probably gonna be first. Gonna have to check it out, that TXT teaser. Oh my God, did you catch Felix on the runway at the LV show? I did, we're so proud of him. Oh my gosh, I mean, Felix is so beautiful. It totally makes sense that um, someone would want him to walk their runway. Yeah, obsessed with seeing Felix walk the runway. Loved seeing Hyunjin at the Versace. Uh, recent event sitting next to Anne Hathaway like 
So iconic. I am... I tried to avoid standing 17 for a bit until I saw them live in Oakland and it was over for me. Oh my god, I love that! Yay! Slip into the diamond life, Bryn. Yes, welcome, welcome. I mean, I love that you went to a live concert thinking that you could resist. <laughs> Who's your bias? Who's your 17 bias? Um, yeah, they, oh my gosh, I got to see them when they were in Toronto and like best day of my life, I swear. So much fun. The energy is insane. Not only from the, the members themselves, but like the audience, like going to a K-pop concert is unlike any other experience. It is insane. It was funny because I went to see My Chemical Romance like two days after the Seventeen concert in the same venue and like two very very different groups and vibes and it was just so fascinating to see the difference in the audience and the show and stuff. I mean both are great but it's just so different. Like with K-pop concerts uh, uh, particularly in North America they it's like it is a full day event like you don't just show up for the concert you, people come like hours and hours beforehand to like meet up trade photo cards go to like do like uh k-pop um like relay random play dances uh line up for hours for merchandise like it's a whole thing <laughs> it is bananas and it's like they're handing out freebies like we were handing out like free like little stickers and photo cards and banners and stuff like it is unlike anything I've ever ever experienced or could have imagined it's wild it's crazy to see these idols attending fashion shows and then they're and then they're back at their dorm with eight other people like a college dorm I know right it is actually so fascinating like I think that probably really plays into why so many of these idols are so humble because like how could you not how could you not be how could you not stay humble when you're like sharing this tiny little dorm with like eight other people <laughs> The thing that always gets me is like seeing some of these idols like when they're like doing live streams or something and they're showing like little bits of their room or whatever and you're like why do you only have one pillow sir or like they have like the teeny tiniest room you could possibly imagine and you're like you are so famous <laughs> and how is it that my bedroom looks bigger than yours <laughs> MCR the GOAT. Oh my gosh, it was so much fun. Like I, prior to being a K-pop girly, I was a pop punk girly in high school and that never really goes away, truly. Um, so yeah, going to see M uh, My Comic Romance was a blast. Like, what is more iconic than that first note in Black Parade? Like, you will summon so many people just from that one ding, that note, that piano note. Iconic. I love getting unexpectedly sucked into something you never expected to love at first, right? It's so serendipitous. 
I mean, that was definitely K-pop for me, for sure. Like, I was obviously very aware of K-pop for a very long time, and I totally understood its appeal objectively. I was like, yeah, like, the music is catchy, they're beautiful, the fashion, the production of the music videos. Like, I was like, I understand. Um, but then during the pandemic, it just, I had a lot of extra time. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, you know, BTS obviously like really, really blew up and I watched like a couple of the music videos and I was like, yeah, okay, I get it. I get it. Um, it wasn't until I watched the tiny desk concert, the BTS tiny desk concert. I was like, that's when you really see them come alive. You see the personalities, you see the chemistry with, and the dynamic of all the members. And that's when you're like, oh, well, maybe I should just, maybe I'll pick a favorite. What's his name? Hmm. And then it's, it's all downhill from there. <laughs> uh, I want to improve my line art. I just can't get it right. I always mess up. I feel you. I would say try using like different limb things to like force, like, what am I trying to say? things to like limit yourself if that makes sense so for me like this sketching process I'm not using a, a pencil or an eraser and that way it forces me to like really commit a little more to my lines I mean I'm still working quite sketchy obviously but there's like a, a larger sense of commitment to it which I think helps um, and then I also think that trying out like a brush pen for line art also helps with like practicing control and getting like different line weights I guess it really depends on what kind of line art you're trying to achieve as well But yeah, I've been really enjoying using ballpoint pen for sketching lately. Also, the other thing is holding up, holding up the sketchbook upright because the angles often look a little different when it's laid flat like this. I always end up, it always ends up being like slightly skewed for me. So I try to be mindful of that too. My bias is S coops, and I totally get what you mean. It's such a magical experience. Oh my god, S coops! S coops. Actually, I have his um, his photo card right now in my little holder on my purse. So he came with me to Seattle. <laughs> I think actually S coops is my wallpaper right now too. Kiwi. Um, I have a rotating K-pop wallpaper on my phone. It's like a setting on iPhones where you can have. Um, you can like select a bunch of photos in a folder and then have it rotate um, randomly. So yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> that's where I'm at in my life right now. Uh, that brings me immense joy every morning seeing which K-pop boy is it gonna be? <laughs> I much prefer seeing someone living in a smaller space and having, and being humble compared to some famous people who have an excess of space and stuff for the sake of having excess. Yes, 100%. And I think that's why like people really gravitate towards um, K-pop idols because even though they are living like larger than life, um, life's, lifestyles in the sense of like going to these fashion shows and having all these fans and concerts and stuff, but there's elements of their life that really grounds them and makes them still really relatable. And I also really appreciate that element because I think when, you know, celebrities, especially like, you know, people like living in Hollywood or whatever, and they live in these gigantic mansions and they have these like personal jets and, you know, all that, all that kind of lifestyle, I think they just become more and more out of touch with reality <laughs> or like the everyday person. Okay, so I'm gonna try and move these eyes just 
slightly higher and I think slightly closer together. I think they were this camera is like kind of in my way to be honest but Punk to K-pop pipeline is so real. It is, isn't it? I was really thinking about it the other day. I was just like, it all makes sense. Cause like the pop punk boys do have that little flair to them. Like, you know, they were wearing skinny jeans and like had their long swoopy bangs and the guy liner and the jewelry. Like they were a little extra. And K-pop boys are just a different flavor of that, essentially. <laughs> It's all making sense. And then if you throw in being an anime fan on top of that, like the Venn diagram is overlapping severely. <laughs> K-pop concerts are awesome. It's like a mini music festival and it restores my faith in the fandom community, sharing the experience in real life. It always brings out the best. It's just so wholesome. Yes, 100%. Mini festival is actually the perfect way to describe it because it definitely is what it feels like. Everyone's Everyone's dressed to the nines, okay? Like people show out in costumes and cute fits as well. Like I love it, love, 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 love it. And like everyone's best friends, like immediately. <laughs> There's just like such a camaraderie and sense of community. I recently ran into and reconnected with an old friend I did theater with as a kid and we're now, uh, we're both now queer and into K-pop, lol. The youth theater to queer K-pop stand pipeline is real too. Oh my God, I love that. I love it. I love that so much. Yeah, connecting, connecting with people, reconnecting with old friends, like through a mutual like obsession, hyperfixation, like love, love. Like I've made, I've made friends as an adult through the mutual love of K-pop and just interacted with strangers. Like literally have had so many wholesome interactions with people on the street because they saw like my photo card holder or something or like some kind of K-pop merch that I had on. It's so cute. When you draw idols, do you ever get upset if you're not able to capture their likeness? Whenever I try, I get mad at myself for not drawing them right and then I give up for weeks before trying again. I feel like I take myself too seriously. Haha, <laughs> I don't know how to get over it. Oh, please. I am in the one, I'm 100% in the same boat as you. Like it, I'm sweating. <laughs> like the pressure, <laughs> the pressure is immense. Um, <laughs> I mean, it also could be the studio light, but still. Um, yeah, no, I'm totally with you. It is very intimidating and daunting and uh, to try and capture someone's likeness, especially if you have like an emotional investment in them. For me, it's like double time because I want to, you know, post it on Instagram or make a YouTube video out of it or make merch out of it, you know? So I feel you. Um, but it is one of those things where at the end of the day, you can just try again, you know? There isn't that much harm lost. And if anything, you'll just be potentially better at it the next time. But that's not always gonna be the case. I've technically drawn Jungkook like several times now and I can never guarantee that it's gonna turn out to actually look like him just because I've technically drawn him before, you know? It's all a learning experience. Every failure is a learning experience. Like, does this look like him? I don't know. But maybe next time if I draw him again, it'll look more like him. I don't know. And I all also I did I did tell myself that this was supposed to be a warm-up sketch, so and we're like 45 minutes in. <laughs> K-pop, most idols feel very, uh, it's about the journey, not the destination coded in that way. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. I, they really pride, or no, they, they take um, like work ethic very seriously. It's coming along good so far, thank you. Um, what was your favorite band back in the day? Mine were Paramore and Pierce the Veil. Oh yeah, Paramore definitely was, I don't, 
probably number one, honestly, like really, really up there. I always joke that Haley Williams raised me to a degree. Like I wanted to be her basically. Like I bought white Doc Martens because Haley Williams had white Doc Martens. <laughs> like <laughs> I idolized her. I still love her. Um, I went to see Paramore during their, um, what, what album was it? The, they, they did a tour with Fall Out Boy a number of years ago. And I was like, I have to go. I absolutely have to go. Um, I also love Fall Out Boy. So it was just like match made in heaven. And it was so much fun. That was when Ain't It Fun uh, came out. That was the, that was the Paramore era, Ain't It Fun. And then for Fall Out Boy, it was like the rock and save rock and roll. I forget what the album's called. <laughs> but for the, for the fellow Paramore and uh, Fall Out Boy fans, you know what I'm talking about. I would love to see Haley Williams drawn in your style. I went to that tour too. It was awesome. The tour was called Monument Tour. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Oh my God. I love it. I wish I bought a t-shirt. I can't believe I didn't buy merch. Ugh. Um, yeah, super sad. I don't, I didn't get merch, but yeah, fantastic time. Oh my gosh. Like the worlds were colliding. Um, they knew what they were doing with that, with that tour. Um, I would love to see Haley Williams in drawn in your style. I used to draw Haley so often in high school. Um, yeah, I haven't done so in a hot minute, but maybe I should. Um, yeah, she was like everything to me. But yeah, I, I remember, I, I remember I did this Paramore fan art and I posted it on DeviantArt and then somebody stole it and then posted it on the official Paramore website. And I think Haley had commented on it or saw it or something and was like, this is cool or whatever. And I had such conflicted feelings about it because I was like, it's amazing that she saw my work and liked it, but also somebody else posted it and got to like have that credit. So <laughs> I was very salty and conflicted about it. But in any case, it was like ages ago. Yeah, Paramore for sure. I also really love Flyleaf and Kitty. I never heard of those ones. Um, I was, yeah, Paramore, Fall Out Boy, Panic at the Disco, uh, My Chemical Romance, uh, All Time Low. I was obsessed with All Time Low. Um, Something Corporate, which is like a little bit of an older group, but I was like, yeah, Andrew McMahon. Man? Andrew McMahon? I was like obsessed with him. Um, I got to see Something Corporate when they did their like reunion, near 10 year reunion tour, and I like cried when they played Constantine. <laughs> 2000s music hit different, bro. They don't do it like they used to. It is a different, it was a truly like particular era of time. Like I have a Spotify playlist with like all that music and every time I'm just feeling a little nostalgic, a little bit up in my feelings, I put it on and it's, it's great. Something, something went awry here. I think I made the eyes too elongated. Jungkook's eyes are definitely much more like rounded. So that's what happened there. And I think I still made them slightly too far apart. Yeah, like Jungkook's eyes are much more round, like wide up, like round. I made them a little bit too elongated, too almond shape, but it's fine. But you know, we are learning, right? Like to the person who is like asking about, you know, the disappointment of capturing someone's likeness, like we're, we learn, we learn. We like, we deduce the, the issues and next time I'll be very mindful of uh, making sure I get his round, round eyes. I also might have made, yeah, no, I think that, yeah, the eyes was the, the main thing.
then that's fine. I got your picture, I'm coming with you, dear Maria, come me in. Oh my god, obsessed, obsessed. <laughs> uh, yeah, the chokehold, the chokehold that they had on me. Okay, anyone remember the Tokyo Hotel era? It was crazy. Oh yes, 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 yes. yes. With like two-door cinema club, um, that kind of like fostered the people. Am I thinking of the right thing? Where it was like a little bit more... Mm, I don't know how to describe it, but I know what you mean, I think. Oh heck yeah, I was obsessed with Tokyo Hotel. Listening to their music honestly helped me ace my German finals. <laughs> Please share the playlist. <laughs> Should I? I? I've had this before. I've had people ask about my Spotify playlist before. Um, we're getting old, folks. We are. We are. Uh... Like, I know to some people, like, us talking about this, like, pop punk era, they're gonna be like, I wasn't even born yet. <laughs> um, but admittedly, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit, kind of want to weirdly gatekeep my, my Spotify, just because I, I feel like I'd be self-conscious about it. I know it's silly, because it's just music, but... But let me, let me pull up, let me see who else was on this playlist. I love that I, um, I set out to do a K-pop video and now we're talking about pop punk. I mean, it all, it's all come together. It all makes sense. <laughs> we're all the same. Um, let's see, what, what is it called? Pop punk feels. I used to call it pop punk trash and then I changed it. Um, who else is on here? The Killers, Yellow Card, Sum 41. Sum 41 from my fellow Canadians. Oh my god, Mingi from 80s during a live stream or something, you mentioned that he was listening to Sum 41 and like Limp Biscuit, and I was like, hello, we love that for you. Um, Mayday Parade, Dashboard Confessional, Jack's Mannequin, All American Rejects, Taking Back Sunday, Jimmy Eat World, Cute is What We Aim For, oh my god, Blink 182, Mariana's Trench, also for my fellow Canadians. Mariana's Trench is for the Canadian pop punk lovers who are also theater kids. Like that's, <laughs> that's the Venn diagram. The Spill Canvas, Boys Like Girls. Oh yeah. Avril Lavigne, you know. We gotta get a little, a little more Canadian up in here. Lincoln Park, yeah. The Rasmus, I'm finished, so they're definitely a thing in my teenage years. I have not heard of the Rasmus. I guess maybe because I'm Canadian. <laughs> I know this is not related to music, but I saw an Insta reel the other day of a teenager putting concealer on as lip color and they were like, oh my god, retro lip tutorial. And I was like, girl, don't do it. <laughs> concealer lip, retro lip tutorial. I'm dead. I'm freaking dead. Stop. <laughs> also, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, don't. That was such a bad look. Why would you want your lips to disappear? And also concealer on your lips sounds so cakey and just asking for like a dry lip disaster. Oh my gosh. I def listen to all those bands. Love, love it, love it, love it. Avril Lavigne is definitely mother. I mean, like Olivia Rodrigo and Billie Eilish, like Avril Lavigne walks so they could run, truly. Um, I'm With You by Avril Lavigne, that for karaoke is chef's kiss. It is so much fun and also when you try to do it as a non-professional singer, you're like, girls got vocal chops because the song is hard, <laughs> but it's so fun. Uh. I liked the look of light colored lips, but definitely not for concealer lips. Yeah, there's, there's definitely a line between light colored lips and like 
matching your skin tone. <laughs> um, yeah, I think for me right now, because I think especially because I'm fair, like I have a fair skin tone and I have dark hair, I think I gravitate towards uh, more saturated or like more contrasty lip colors just to like balance all of my features out. I also have like dark eyes. So that's kind of where I'm at lately, but there was definitely a time where I used to go for like lighter um, lip colors. Oh my God, this sketch is taking so long. Why, why do I do this? I don't know how many K-pop idols I'm gonna get to today. I mean, originally I was gonna do two. Maybe I'll get to th three, I don't know. We'll see. It's all good. We're, we're vibing, we're having a good time. Yeah, it doesn't totally look like him, but it's all good. When I was at BTS's concert in 2018, Jungkook cried on stage and I was like, should I clap? Too socially awkward even in that situation. Aww. <laughs> I totally understand. Because one of those things where like you as an audience member, when you see the performer, you know, like emoting or going through something or whatever, like you want to give them a reaction, right? You want to like acknowledge what they're going through or the emotions that they're feeling, but like you also don't want to be disrespectful and like yell things at them. So <laughs> I get that. <laughs> I think maybe in that situation, you could it could be like a aww. I think that would maybe be a, an appropriate reaction. But then, then does that seem condescending? No, I don't know. <laughs> I recently made a playlist of all the songs I listened to in high school and named it formative emo songs I listened to on my broken mp3 player when I was a sad teen with undiagnosed depression. <laughs> that is incredibly specific but honestly so painfully accurate. <laughs> Incredible. mp3 players. Yeah, that was the time. Did I have an mp3 player? I think... I must have. I must have. Um, I definitely had a Discman. I had a Discman first, and then I had a Hit. Um, do you remember those Hit clips? Was that what it's called? Hit clips? That's like going back, like back before high school for me. Um, where you would have like 30 seconds of the song. Oh my gosh. Then MP3 players, then iPods. Yep. Yeah, no, I think I did have an MP3 player before I got an iPod. Or iPod Nano or whatever. <laughs> I gotta say, sketching with ballpoint pen on this particular paper is really nice. It's very smooth and satisfying. It feels, it feels nice. Is it a K-pop boy hairstyle without the perfectly placed strands framing the face? The amount of hairspray, I'm sure, is immense. There's been so many times when I'm out and about and my bangs are just like flapping in the wind from like, you know, just, yeah, the wind blowing them all around and they just, I'm sure they look crazy. And I'm like, how do these K-pop idols have like perfectly structured hair when they're like doing all this crazy dancing and I'm like oh yeah like 50 pounds of hairspray <laughs> I'm considering it I'm considering putting hairspray in my bangs because it's so silly looking when it's windy out <laughs> 
love a good strand in the face, right? It's just that, it's that anime touch. <laughs> I had a Zune. That sounds familiar. I don't know if I had one of those, but it sounds familiar. I'm glad I went to BTS concert before because I can't imagine getting tickets bef when they're back together after military. I know it's going to be, it's going to be like full Hunger Games Battle Royale style, like trying to get tickets. I am very jealous of all of the people who were ahead of their time and went to see like literally any K-pop group prior to the pandemic, basically, because yeah, getting tickets to K-pop concerts now is insane. Like you got to sell a kidney for that. But I will. <laughs> I will. Uh, the top on my list right now is 80s. And then I really want 17 to do another one before they start enlisting. And I'd love to see Stray Kids as well in TXT. 80s, I feel the most optimism for because it has been confirmed that they actually came to Canada like a few years ago. So there is a high chance that they will come back. Um, they're also like probably my alt group at the moment. So yeah, that's what I'm, I'm banking on. Hopefully. I just know their hair sounds crunchy. <laughs> yes, I'm so excited slash terrified for AT's tour dates. I know, why haven't they released the dates yet? It's killing me, killing me. I was like, I went into 2024 being like, okay, all my K-pop boys are gonna release their concert dates and I will structure my entire life around it. And no one has released dates. I'm so nervous that like, they're gonna be like, yeah, our tour date is this. And I'm gonna be like, I have to be at a wedding. Like, I'm gonna be so mad. <laughs> I'll sell organs to go to a Stray Kids concert at this point. Seriously, 100%. Do I need a kid name? I don't know. Like, do I need it? <laughs> do I need to see Stray Kids in concert? Yes. Who is, who's your uh, Stray Kids and AT's biases? I wanna know, tell me the goods. I think I need to finally start working on the next portrait, but you know what? This turned out for having not done any drawing for like a week or more, it's not bad. It doesn't quite, it doesn't quite look like him, but it's not terrible. Like, at least he still looks handsome. <laughs> That's important. There has been times where I've drawn, I've drawn uh, what's supposed to be K-pop idols and they look hideous. And I'm like, I did everything wrong. Um, <laughs> might not look like him, but at least he looks handsome. He looks so yummy, Tina. <laughs> Thank you. Good, good, good. That's important. Mingi Bangchan. Ooh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. There's a thief. I feel like, I see it, I see it. Han and Hong Jung. Oh my god! Yeah, Hong Jung is my. How does one choose a bias in ATs? Honestly, that's so real. Like it's constantly rotating for me. But like, you know, my I think my default my default answer for ATs is Hong Jung. But like, I also love Sangwa and Hong and, and Han uh, San <laughs> and uh, Sangwa. And then with Stray Kids, I always flip flop between Bang Chan and Han. Three Racha, basically. 
Uh, hey Tina, hey guys, hi, hi. We're deep in K-pop chat right now. It's so hard to just have one bias in both ATs or stray kids, truly. We've got two kidneys for a reason and we only need one to function. <laughs> one to function, one to a K-pop concert. Gotta make it count. <laughs> I felt that. I have four biases in ATs. Me too! Oh my god, literally. It's like four biases and then I love the other four, like, of course, but you know. <laughs> I'm too old for this. I did my K-pop time with groups like Infinite, Block B, B2B, EXO. I don't know these new fangled groups. LMFAO, uh, 17 were babies when I got out of the fandom. Yes, yeah, you were a, a second and third gen. Or a second gen, right? First and second gen. I'm a newbie K-pop fan, so that's why, that's where we're at. Yeah, 17, when I see like their debut music videos, they were fetuses. They were t teeny little children. So cute. But they've come a long way. They're doing great. Uh, Han and San, really the matching names. I love it. I love it. Well, the computer servers at work aren't feeling so well. I guess I have an early weekend. Oh my god, yay. Amazing. You still capture the likeness and that can be hard. Thank you, thank you. You said Sangwa twice, so you must really love him. LOL, so valid. <laughs> yeah, it's a problem. I... <laughs> yeah, Hongjun will be so mad. Um, <laughs> ATs released like these really, really cute animal plushy mascots. And I was like, I, it's not a want, it's a need. So I, I got the internets, um, I made the internet work for me. And, um, I asked in my Instagram stories, I was like, y'all, does someone have a hookup? I need these. Um, and yeah, so someone, uh, I forget their name, but they came through for me and hooked me up with their friend who is doing like a, a big group order for the ATs plushies. And I'm getting a Hongjun squirrel and a Sungwa bunny. And I'm so excited. They're going to be so cute. <laughs> I saw Girls' Generation promoting. I've been here for so long. I need my veterans card. <laughs> yeah, you should get like a senior's discount for concerts. <laughs> I'm actually drawing Sungwa right now. Oh my god, which Sungwa hair? Which era? Um, I'm a 2015 K pop fan, but I took a break from my indie rock journey from 2018 to 2020. Ah, welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> I love these second gen groups have been here a while. Aw. Did you hear about Akira Toriyama? I did. So, so sad. Like, he was still really young. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, he is the creator of Dragon Ball, which is like such a legendary series. And even though, look, I don't have the same investment in Dragon Ball as many others. Like I watched it when I was really young and I obviously recognize like how influential um, it is like to pop culture and to anime and manga. And yeah, I remember being like in my t like very, very young childhood age and Sailor Moon and Dragon Ball were both kind of airing around the same time for me. And I remember loving Sailor Moon and eating that up and then watching Dragon Ball and also loving it. And I was like, I love this, it's so fun. And then, you know, because society, someone was like, isn't Dragon Ball for boys? Like, why are you watching that? And then they made me feel bad about it. And I was like, I just wanna know what Piccolo is up to, leave me alone. Um, so then unfortunately I just like didn't stick with it, but yeah, very sad. Truly a legend, like absolutely. Okay, so we are going to move on to my next bias. Okay, let's do and bring in Mingyu. Mingyu from 17. The other 97 boy. I love that Mingyu and Jungkook are besties. Like I didn't know that prior to picking my biases. Like I went into BTS and I was like, Jungkook, that's the one. And then 17, I was like, Mingyu, that's the one. And then I found out later that they're both 97s and that they're like besties and I was like do I have a type what's going on um <laughs> my favorite was like when they were doing the the like dance challenges together and people were like I want two boyfriends so I can dress them up like twins <laughs> I was like this is so funny to me <laughs> 
Live action Sailor Moon, I wonder if that is in the works. I don't know if I want that, to be honest. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, <laughs> I've seen it, I've seen people talking about it. Like I think they had discovered like an old, old like American live action or something. Is that what I'm thinking of? But anyway, I don't know. I don't think I want that. Um, Dragon Ball Z was my gateway to anime. I think it was for a lot of people. Yeah, 100 percent. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to actually using a pencil and I'm gonna try and actually like really dig into like getting his likeness. I'm gonna try, we'll see, I don't know about that. Uh, and then we're gonna attempt using paints and colored pencils, I think. So, a little nervous about it, but we're gonna, we're gonna try, we're gonna try. Um, I'm feeling ambitious. Live action just never really works. I think, especially for something like Sailor Moon, it's just like how beautiful and magical it is. I just, it, I don't think it could ever possibly be captured in live action. Like part of the beauty of it is that it being told in animation. Um, how many of your biases have you done this live stream? Only one! <laughs> I'm so slow, it's been an hour. So we just did Jungkook um, from BTS. Um, I am now moving on to Mingyu from Seventeen. Okay, yes. Okay. So you haven't missed much in terms of uh, <laughs> volume, because I'm slow. <laughs> so. Okay, let me zoom you guys in. Also, apologies in advance. It's gonna be like very light. Um, it's gonna be kind of hard to see um, for a little bit because when I sketch with pencil, I go quite light to start, um, especially on this paper because I think if I remember correctly, it doesn't erase very well. So. Oh my god, I came across a TikTok because Mingyu, he was like at the Dior show recently and there's this video of him like just like going through the crowd or something and there was a comment, they're like, who is this man? I think I'm in love. Um, and the comments were so funny to me. Like half of them were like, he's a bodyguard, don't worry about it, he's not important. Um, and then some of them are just like, that's my husband, so... <laughs> like the delusion and the gatekeeping, so funny. Did you watch the live action Avatar The Last Airbender? Okay, I have thoughts. I have thoughts. I have thoughts. Um, I have thoughts, but I also will have more thoughts later because um, if you didn't see my TOF, my recent TOF um, YouTube video, which you should watch if you're an Avatar fan after this, um, but I, up at, at this point, I've still only seen the first episode, <laughs> but to be honest, I think it kind of told me everything I need to know about the live action um, version, which uh, is that it's not terrible, but not great either. Uh, I'm still curious enough to watch the rest, but I am currently uh, watching it with my friend so we can like have comment live commentary together. Um, I'm actually hanging out with her tonight slash tomorrow. So we, I don't know if we're going to get around to watching it because we are probably going to prioritize watching 17's Nana tour, which I'm very excited to watch. But yeah. So anyway, um, I heard that they got greenlit for a second and third season which i'm like very happy for them because you know the actors looked like they really loved the series and enjoyed working on it um but also it seemed like it got really mixed reviews so i wasn't sure if it was actually gonna get greenlit or not so it's pretty impressive that i got greenlit for two more seasons Imagine a live action Sailor Moon and they cast Sydney Sweetie as Usagi. No hate to her, but you know they would do it. I hate it. I hate it. But you're right. You're right. They probably would. Cinderella was awesome, but only for the dress. I think Cinderella was one where it kind of worked. Um, but 
yeah, I think that was like the one where I was like, this kind of works. Um, anyone know if this live will be saved? Yes, I will save the live stream. I pretty much like for the past like year or so, I have like a whole backlog of live streams that I save for you to watch back later. Um, so yes, you're, you're all good there. Unless something, something really technical goes wrong, but so far has been no issues as far as I know. So yes, you should be able to watch it again later. Oh, the, the pain of open mouth expressions. It's so challenging. But the reason why I picked this photo was because I find, especially with wanting to capture somebody's likeness, it's a lot easier to uh, figure out the planes of the face when there's like a very clear light source and you can see like clear shadows on the face. Um, and I also really liked that this particular photo has this like kind of pink backlighting, which as some of you might know, I love doing that in my, in my work. So it's kind of perfect um, in that sense. So that's why I picked this photo, but the mouth is going to be really challenging. Also teeth, why are teeth so difficult? It's so true. You don't want them to look like Totoro where like every individual teeth is like so like gnarly, but you also have to like address that there are teeth. <laughs> Oh no, you're making my artist tingle go online. It's been so long. I don't even want to see how much my skills have declined. No, don't think about that. Don't even think about that. Think about the joy of being able to create something again. And just think about how fun it can be. Don't think about the result. Think about the journey. It's about the climb, as Miley Cyrus says. <laughs> Is there a particular body part that you love or hate drawing? For me, I love drawing hands, but the nose is always my arch nemesis. Interesting. I'm a little bit cliche. I find hands really challenging to draw, but really satisfying when I get them right. Um, this is going to sound weird, but I find drawing boobies really fun. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, there's just something very beautiful about them. <laughs> Hence why so many of my female characters, when I draw them, they always have like corsets on or low cut tops or like nothing at all. Cause I just, it's so, it's so fun to draw. <laughs> Feet are interesting to draw. Oh, Feet are definitely something I don't like to draw. Characters are always gonna have socks or shoes on for me, most part. There were some things I liked about the Avatar The Last Airbender live action, but without any spoilers, I feel like they were lazy with writing Aang's journey. The actor was great though. I felt like the actor had like great energy um, from what I saw in the first episode. I do think that the, the, the show severely suffered from writing. Yeah, the writing I think was, um, uh, not great. And I think was a big culprit of the things that I didn't like about the live action, like the pacing. Um, some of the dialogue was weird. There was a lot of exposition. Uh, the, the order that they chose to do certain things. I don't know. Um, obviously I knew that like, you can't do a one-to-one, -one, um, like you shouldn't. That's just not gonna be successful because things translate differently and the structure had to be different because it was eight episodes versus 20 something but yeah it was just I don't know it was clunky it felt really clunky the writing and pacing and stuff so you know but who's to say that um, they can't do better next time Oh, the mouth looks so weird. I have to make sure I don't go too dark because then it makes me like commit to it when I don't want to. Wow, 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 Mingyu. Yes, uh, no, sorry. oh, Mingyu. No, sorry, Mingyu. I love Mingyu and I love Mingyu, but yes, this is Mingyu. I just started my digital art journey and bought a pen display tablet. Ooh, exciting! Um, have you listened to Boy Next Door? I have! Uh, 
I'm blanking. There's so many new groups out. What song do they do again? Boy Next Door. I've definitely listened to them though. Hold on. I'm pulling them up. Boy. Oh my gosh. Play. As I'm typing in B-O, first came up Bo, uh, Bo Burnham and then came up Boy Genius. Boy Next Door. Oh yeah, one and all. You're my one and only. Uh, 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 da, na, 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 na. Yeah. I like drawing noses too. Noses was something that I didn't like to draw for a really long time. I think because I was like, you know, uh, had like anime brain rot for a long time and they often don't really pay attention to the noses. But after sort of like kind of exploring my art style more, now I like drawing noses. They're not my favorite. I think eyes and lips are definitely my favorite, but I like drawing the nose. Good morning, Tina. So happy to catch some of this live, but unfortunately I won't be here for the whole thing because I will be going for a long road trip soon to go to my Nana's for her 90th. Wow. Congrats to Nana for going, for hitting 90. That's amazing. Um, happy to have you for the duration that you're here. This photo is making me want to listen to that clip of Shadow live on repeat in the rain. Jakarta? Yes. Yes. I know exactly the clip. I know the exact clip that lives in my brain, rent free. I'm like replaying in my mind just now. Um, <laughs> stay with me, stay with me. Yeah, it's like iconic, iconic. If you know, you know. Oh, I know, I know. Oh, and I finally got my hand on your brushes, so can't wait to finally experiment with painting. Yay, oh my God, so exciting. I'm gonna paint with them soon. Uh, or two, I should say two, not soon. I don't know how long this sketch is gonna take me. I'm like, being real slow up in here but the pressure the pressure to draw my man Mingyu oh my gosh the thing is it's hard to really know if you're doing it right because of all the shadows and stuff as well so maybe if I draw them in it makes it a little bit Oh my god, this music sounds like the animal Dabi Dobata DBD. Do you hear it in the back? Dabidi. I don't even play Animal Chronicling. I just know that tune because of uh, that clip of Hyunjin doing it. Nabi Dobata. What's your favorite K-pop song, like all time, if you had to pick one? That is a very challenging question. Um, <laughs> especially, especially as a Libra, I, that is so, that is such a hard question to answer. But, you know, gun to my head, if I had to, if I really just had to pick one, um, the first thing that comes to my mind actually is Euphoria by Jungkook, BTS. I don't know what it is. That song just like hits me right in the, the warm fuzzies. And I think it's a song that like I never skip and it brings me a lot of joy. I'm just adjusting my chair. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, you're a Libra? Ignore that question then. <laughs> I'm being good. I answered. I'm so good. I'm so good. I'm learning. I'm learning. I actually laughed out loud at that fellow indecisive Libra here. <laughs> We're truly that meme, that the notebook meme uh, with uh, Ryan Gosling and Rachel McAdams. I don't know the characters' names, but you know, and he's like, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> noses are such an important feature to capture likeness noses and eyes the rest you can half ask your way around it i do think yeah like eyes and nose is something that like we as humans really pay attention to um so i do think that they are really important for likeness lips i definitely think are part of it too but i do agree that like lips are maybe the thing that we're not paying attention to as much although it does actually i think it does vary from face to face like some faces like their lips are just like a very prominent or unique feature to them like i think rihanna is a good example of that like her super 
sharp cupid's bow I think is a very distinct feature for her and I know this because I draw Rihanna a lot um <laughs> but yeah I do think but you know as they say eyes are the window to the soul <laughs> When I was looking up photos for Mingyu, I noticed that a lot of his photos were of this side of his face. So I'm, I wonder if this is his like preferred, you know, good side. I'm sure there is literally no such thing as Mingyu having a bad side, but it is really interesting how people, you know, have or claim to have like a good side. Cause I've never really thought about that before, like for anyone, including myself. But it is definitely a thing. Y'all, why did I do this? This is so much pressure. I don't think I'm going to be able to capture his handsome face. I've tried and it hasn't worked before. The pressure! Microcosmos as well. Oh, such a good song. That's also a very, like, feel-good song. I, I ask you, friends... For the K-pop, the the fellow K-pop fans, what is your favorite K-pop song of all time? It's such a hard question to answer. Like, even if you narrow it down by group, like that's also hard. Narrowing it down by group is easier, but like of all time, oh my gosh. Being asked my favorite song of all time is my nightmare. I literally cannot pick just one for my life. Give me my ta uh, f give me five to ten business days to give you a categorized list instead exactly exactly right it has to be like by group by like era of my life because <laughs> like it definitely changes you know i think that um one like you know what if my favorite song of all time i haven't hasn't even been made yet um <laughs> or um you know, if you were to ask this question to me before I was into K-pop, it would have been a very different question. Although, my favorite song of all time, including K-pop, excluding K-pop, what would that be? I don't really know. Again, I'm my Libra ass cannot make a decision. But now I'm thinking, if I were to go do it by K-pop group, what my favorite songs would be. I feel like... I think for 17, it might be To You or Rock With You. I really like the Ataka album. That's probably my favorite. Yeah, that's my favorite album. I love all the songs except for Pang. Sorry about it. <laughs> all the other songs are like peak. So good. Crush? Anyone? Ugh. So good. Oof, too many to choose, only one. I know. BTS Spring Day and Serendipity. No song has topped these since 2017, except maybe Black Swan. <gasps> Spring Day and Serendipity are also very good. Um, you like multiple songs for different reasons. How can you pick just one or movies too? Oh yeah, movies too. Oh my gosh, yeah. Like movies, you gotta categorize it. It's like animated versus like, yeah. I'm a Libra too. If I say one song today, tomorrow will be a different answer, right? 100%. Honestly, that's kind of like picking biases. Okay, I need to draw eyebrows in, otherwise he just looks like a potato. And then like we need placeholders and then we'll finagle things. Okay, now, eyebrow, eyebrow, eyebrow. How many Libras are here? 
what? Did I just like, is this like a Libra congregation? <laughs> oh, for sure. I think my fave is Infinite Speed Mine. Too hard to pick a favorite anything. Since I'm a MOA, I have to say Our Summer. It's such a cozy song and always makes me feel good. Ah, yes. Oh my God. When Blue Hour came out, it was like before I was even like a proper TXT fan. I just knew that song and it like was in my top five in Spotify that year because it just gave me such serotonin. <laughs> Rock With You is my favorite Seventeen song. Oh, it feels so good to listen to. Seven, oh, Rock With You was like the song that really got me into Seventeen. Like I had heard, like an, I had listened to a bunch of them, but then hearing the Rock With You live rock version, you know the one I'm talking about where they're all wearing black and they're just like standing up microphones. That's when I was like, oh yeah. I like this group. <laughs> it's over for me. <laughs> I hadn't seen the Mingyu Shadow Jakarta clip before, so I went and watched it, and now I'm clutching my pearls. <laughs> did did the clip also include S Coops coming in as well? Oh my god. Yeah, it's a it's a moment. It's a moment. It truly lives in my head rent rent free. It's the it's it's the deep voice for me. It's so good. And the, the stare, he knows how to work the camera. The rain, the rain was a paid actor, like truly. Very Good by Block B or The Chaser by Infinite or Ah uh, Ah uh, by Team Top or like so many EXO songs I can't count. <laughs> My partner is a Libra, picking a place to eat is literally hell. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I just had a crazy thought, but what about an Avatar The Last Airbender fighting game? That would be genius. Have they not made that yet? That would seriously be so good. Okay, so now that we've like kind of blocked in the other features here, I can kind of see or I can try and deduce like what needs to be fixed. I also think kind of just like mapping out the rough silhouette also helps too. Like the hair because that's like the shape the silhouette of the hair is really like plays an important role as well so wow the hair is so perfectly like quaffed and again that that little strand that perfect little strand that comes down okay so what's happening here eyebrows need to come down slightly right yes and then the mouth is definitely not right for sure. The eyes, he has a double eyelid on here, so let's... It's a very subtle double eyelid, but it's definitely there. This side, it's like the double eyelid comes, you can see it just on the ends because of the angle there. The tear duct kind of points out a little bit. His tear ducts are kind of sharp, right? Something that I think I often do is I make the irises a little bit too big. That's probably like my anime influence coming in. <laughs> the eyes might be, they might be slightly too close together as well. Maybe this eye might be slightly too close. My mother is a Libra. I cannot shop with her without losing my sanity. <laughs> Libra here. So what I'm discovering is being indecisive is a Libra trait. Maybe I should have been a Libra instead. <laughs> Obviously, because I'm here for the aesthetics and Tina serves. <laughs> thank you, thank you. In terms of decisions, I'm not too indecisive. I've gotten better over the years. I definitely have gotten better, I think. Um, but generally, yes. Oh yes, S Coop's coming in and Dino. Yes, Dino with the rap. Oh my gosh. The Mingyu S Coop's shadow in the rain clip is my Roman Empire. 100%. It's so good. It's like tattooed in the inside of my brain. Sungwa sketch update. He looks more like Taeyang and Felix's love child. Oh well, at least I had fun. I mean, that sounds like a very handsome person. <laughs> I love how that isn't that so funny how that happens though I did a sketch of what was supposed to be Bangtan and then he ended up looking like Kyo from P1 Harmony I was like how did this happen hold on let me pull it out no 
No, wrong sketchbook. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is my sketchbook with like sketch like multitudes of sketches. Where is that? Oh my god, it's in my other oh, sketchbook. Oh my gosh. I have too many sketchbooks, guys. Too many sketchbooks. I'm getting derailed, but don't mind me. Okay. Actually, speaking of Songwa, I had also tried to draw Songwa here, but it just did not end up quite looking like him. I think I got his nose, but everything else was wrong. This Jackson, I'm actually like, I feel like went fairly well. This Jackson Wang, not too, pretty good. Then someone asked me to draw Hwasa, so I did her too. Um, and then this was the, what was supposed to be Bang Chan, straight up like very much looks like Kyo from P1 Harmony, like for reals. I was like, huh? Um, <laughs> but anyway, okay, okay, derailed, derailed, got derailed. Drawing with you is so relaxing, Tina. Oh, yay, I'm so glad. As a Libra, I'm absolutely drawn towards anything fall slash cozy vibes. I love that. Love fall and cozy vibes, 100%. That's the other stereotype of Libras is that we're obsessed with aesthetics, which I feel like I can attest to personally. Um, what's everyone's Chinese zodiac? Oh, I'm a goat or a ram. I think it kind of gets mixed up sometimes, but of that variety, a goat slash ram. <laughs> okay, now I'm curious about the shadow live clip. <laughs> I don't think you'll be disappointed. <laughs> I love those sketches too. Oh my god. Yay, thank you. I'm a go for Chinese Zodiac. Oh, yay, me too, me too. K-pop fan art is crazy. One wrong move and boom, they look like another idol. <laughs> right? I know these are old and probably defunct girl group, but I think you should check out any Exit music videos or the MV for Hobgoblin by CLC. I think you will love the fashion. Oh, I've definitely heard of those groups before. CLC used to be... Wait, no, I'm thinking of CL. Is CL... CL is from 21, right? CLC is different. I'm a rabbit, a horse zodiac cute hello hope you're doing okay have any advice for not giving up in art currently struggling with self-confidence in my art oh i my advice to you or at least what i would say to you which maybe will help give you some comfort is that we all go through that um i personally had really struggled with that a lot like all of last year essentially the thing that keeps me going, honestly, is that like I try to remind myself of why I do it in the first place and that like art is always going to be a journey. It's never going to be like a perfect upward kind of hill. And I guess another thing maybe that's more tangible perhaps is to look at old artwork that you really liked. Um, and just like maybe that can spark some joy for you or um, kind of remind you of why you liked making art in the first place. But I'm rooting for you and know that uh, we all go through it no matter like what age, skill level, professional or hobby, like we all go through it. Okay, changing where the like the thickness of the neck made a really big difference because I originally had it kind of forward and then moving it back really helped as well. It's these, all these little, little things that make a big difference. The ear shape. The mouth is definitely not right. So let's just erase that. But I think we're getting closer. We're getting closer. Like I think the general shape is getting there.
his bottom lash line in this photo is not super dark or prominent like it doesn't look like there's any like eye makeup or anything like that so i'll definitely try to make sure to keep the lash line on the bottom kind of lighter that's something i've noticed that i fall fall into that sort of throws up the likeness is like i tend to just like stylistically always go for like really bottom heavy like lashes or just like really defined bottom lash lines and a lot of these male k-pop idols just don't have that and then it ends up looking not like them so that's something i'm trying to pay attention to uh, yeah, CLC is different. Okay, noted, noted. Um, I'm a Sagittarius and Horus in the Chinese Zodiac, so if we combine them, I'm a centaur, I guess. <laughs> I love that. When I used to draw with actual HP pencils, I always drew too heavy-handed and then trying to erase it. I'm very thankful for digital art. Still will always love and appreciate traditional, though. Oh, yeah, I, I'm actually, like, a little bit heavy-handed as well. So I understand where you're coming from. I hate graphite pencils, honestly. Like I have not touched a graphite pencil in ages. Um, so yeah, I just hate the smudging, like wait. Yeah, CLC. <laughs> I'm just Aries, fire sign and dragon. So extra fire, just a lot of fire. <laughs> That's a su like such a cool combo though. Like I wish I was a dragon. That's so sick. I love it so far. Thank you. Yoonjin, Yoojin from Kelper used to be in CLC. Oh, interesting. Um, I always love your art, but it's looking great. Thank you. Yi, uh, Yin, Yin from CLC is my queen. I'm a Taurus and goat ram, so extra stubborn maybe. <laughs> it's so funny seeing like how many of your zodiacs and or like your Chinese zodiac and your like your astrological zodiacs like kind of matching that's so good i love your art so much and you in general thank you for the advice oh thanks um stick with what you enjoy and you will improve but also know your mistakes and so you don't keep on making them and constructive criticism while maybe a little scary actually does help if done correctly yes constructive criticism can be daunting because it's like sometimes you can't help but like take it kind of personally but it is true sometimes like a, a different set of eyes can really like help because they'll notice something that you didn't or couldn't see. Um, but yeah, I get it. I'm, uh, I think I need to make his jaw, like the, the, the jaw area slightly wider, I think, or something. Like there needs to be more room maybe. Okay, let's try that. I think the placement of like the eyes and stuff is right. The mouth, I think I got his nose. I think the nose is correct, which is good because that's important. But yeah, let's do me and getting in these. You can kind of see just a hint of his ear over here. Okay, yeah, this mouth. This mouth is going to be the challenging part. I feel like the placement of the corners was right. I think it was just the general shape that I got wrong. Oh my god, you're drawing both my biases today, girl. I can't. Oh my god, I see. Taste, taste, taste. I love it, I love it. <laughs> um, have you tried drawing San? His nose is so difficult to draw because it's one of his most distinct and unique facial features. <gasps> I have drawn San. Hold on. Can we talk about, oh my god, can we talk about San's um, cat plushy like, character for him? It looks just like him, it's so cute! I wanted to get one so bad, but I had to be realistic. I was like, two plushies is enough. Um, I had to be mindful of not just getting all of them, but it's very tempting. Um, and I love that in a live stream, he specifically said that he requested to have little heart hearts on the cat's butt, which is so cute. Um, okay. So this was like my, this was like my, uh, <laughs> 80s doodle spread for some reason. Um, I don't have Jungle on here, which, sorry about it, but I ran out of room. But it started out with this Mingi full body sketch because 
for my ATs girlies, you know, you know this, you know the photo shoot. I had to do it. Um, Hongjun in his Say My Name mullet because I'm obsessed. I don't love how his face turned out. I actually like very. I I did him dirty with that, but the mullet, the mullet. I like Sung Law here at the bottom. This was Oo Young. Doesn't does not look like Oo Young at all. You know is not bad. Like I think kind of looks like him. This is Yo Song. Not too bad. Um, but I do actually really like this son. Um, especially because I find this particular angle on a face like kind of challenging. Uh, profiles in general I think are hard, but especially when it's like a profile but like just slightly askew. Um, but yeah, I like really really like how this San one came out and the hand too. Um, one of those things where like I hate drawing hands usually, but when it turns out right, I'm pretty proud. Um, Wow, the gas by Gus sound looks beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, oh my gosh, okay, sorry. I'm like, I'm mixing up the chat order here. I wanted to be a dragon, but then I remembered that I'm a goat, so I guess I'm the goat. You know what? That's a good way of looking at it. Because I'm also a goat. We goats. Greatest of all time. I love it. <laughs> um, I am also left-handed, so I can relate to the smudges, which is why I taught myself to draw right with my right hand and now trying to use my left hand is so bizarre so you're like kind of ambidextrous that's really cool i wish i was ambidextrous not to circle not to circle back to mcr but i just saw a tweet saying the song helena came out 19 years ago and i need to lay down why did you tell me that oh my god that's crazy that is crazy well to also make us feel old apparently the first episode of sailor moon aired 32 years ago today you know that's fine totally fine um okay i've opened a sketchbook so we'll see what happens with this think the last time i actually had drawn anything was summer of last year i believe in you mila i believe in you uh also you know your song noses look so good yay thank you yeah i think you know especially like his nose is a very distinct feature for him Yo Song, I think Yo Song's kind of, I think what makes his, his features are all really close together. I think it's like kind of the thing that defines him. Ooyoung I just got wrong in this one. I think, wait, I did a different Ooyoung before. Yes. So I did an Ooyoung here. This one I actually think looks like him a little more. It is like a, like turned down, but like the nose. Um, and then I actually quite like this Mingi. The Mingi, Mingi, all of his features are very distinct. Like the eye, the sleepy eyes, the sharp nose, and like the really pooty lips. <laughs> um, yeah. I love this. I do actually quite like this Mingi sketch. This was also song. I cannot draw Songwa to save the life, to save my life. Every time I try to draw him, it just doesn't work. But this photo of him, it's like from a concert and he was like all teary eyed. He just has like the most magical expressions. There is a lot of K-pop sketches in here. This was another really challenging one. I tried to draw Subin, but it's like an open mouth laugh. So like, terrible. Uh, this was Ming Hao, but not, not really capturing his likeness, just drawing his build, his wide shoulders. A lot of, a lot, a lot of, oh, there's a Yongjun. I did like a reel on that one. Wu Young's perf uh, nose is perfect in that drawing. Thank you. I'm going to eat your art. <laughs> wow, but at least Sailor Moon aged well. Perf. Yeah. Sailor Moon. Well, okay, maybe not perfect. That's maybe maybe a, lot, a stretch. But Sailor Moon aged well, and is still extremely iconic to this day. I accidentally refreshed Pinterest and lost my reference. I hate when that happens. Oh my god. I always pin stuff now because that happens to me so often. This live stream reminds me of the six fan art challenge lives you used to do on Instagram three to four years ago. Newton, thanks so much for being with me so long. Aw, it's so true. I, yeah, during the pandemic, I can't believe that was three to four years ago. Yeah, I used to do all my live streams on Instagram and I was doing all these like, yeah, fan art, six, six fan arts. Yeah, anyway. Aw. 
I hope one day an idol sees your art because it looks so good. Thank you. Oh my gosh. I mean, that would be very cool. Hopefully, if they do see it, it's a good one. Um, this is Yeonjun here. I, I referenced Yeonjun. This is a Yeonjun. I think this is a Yeonjun too. He just has like great posing. I think half this page is Yeonjun, honestly. I think this was too. Anyway, that's my little impromptu sketchbook tour. <laughs> Okay, I think I actually am gonna run to the bathroom. I know we didn't make a lot of progress here, but I promise we'll, we'll get to it. Um, I'm gonna run to the bathroom, and this is a perfect opportunity for you guys to do a little bathroom break, snack break, stretch, whichever it may be. And then we will continue. Hello, okay, I am back. Let's catch up on this chatty chat room. Chat, chat, chat room. Sungwon's eyes are so sparkly, the clips of him dancing to Dancing Butterfly Wings all happily makes me smile every time. Him being all happy on stage is like the sweetest thing ever. Lady Gaga music in the background while post sketches. Oh my god, which Lady Gaga song is your fave? I love Lady Gaga. Um, you showing us your sketches reminds me of when I was showing my sketches to my friends and realizing all I'd been drawing was my fave K-pop idols. Felt. I feel seen. <laughs> I love those clips too. My heart flutters even just thinking about it. He's so sweet. He's just 
It's the apple of my eye, truly. Do you have a Pinterest account? Because I want to see your art there. I actually don't have a Pinterest account. Well, I mean, well, I do, but I don't post my art on Instagram. I mean, wait, wow, words. I do not post my art on Pinterest. There we go. <laughs> um, I got into your videos because you did Geralt Olivia and I lost my mind and went on a binge season of drawing Geralt for like a month. Amazing. Oh my gosh, yeah. I only, my, my familiar, familiarity with The Witcher is the Netflix series of it. My friend um, loves The Witcher. Like she loves the books, the video games. So like I kind of heard about it through her in that sense prior to the Netflix show. And then yeah, uh, Henry, Henry Cavill as Geralt was just like delicious. Um, but yeah, unfortunately I have not continued watching the show. It just like, wasn't nearly as good as the first season. I think, yeah, I watched the first two seasons and then I tried watching the third, especially cause I, you know, that was like the last season with Henry Cavill as Geralt, but it wasn't that good. So like, I kind of see why he left. <laughs> um, like it just wasn't as engaging um, to me. Like I remember really, really liking that first season. So unfortunately I don't really know what happened there, but yeah, loved him in the first season or loved, loved that show the first season. Welcome back. Thank you for such cozy company while I work on my watercolor piece for Sakura of America. Yay! I'm happy to be uh happy to be company for you while you work on stuff. Um yeah, that's like exactly how I want my live streams to feel. I want it to feel like we're just hanging out. Also, yes, I changed. Um I changed out of the t-shirt and I put my hair up because I was just like very overheated with this studio light <laughs> coming at me. So I changed. Um, hopefully I don't look too exposed. <laughs> um, oh, for sure. I agree. I stopped after the second two. Henry knew it wasn't going in a good direction. So he dipped and I don't blame him at all. He was so good though. I love him. Yeah. I honestly, I really respect him for like doing what creatively felt right. Cause this was a franchise that he, felt really really strongly about and i'm yeah i think he you know only wanted to be a part of the project if it resonated with him so yeah i do respect that decision it's a shame henry won't be returning um after the third and yeah it really wasn't that good that's a, that's such a shame also in GTA, the weather is beautiful today. Love that I can be in a t-shirt in my house. Yes, the sun is shining finally. Oh my God. Yeah, I, I have not stepped outside today, but I did yesterday and it was beautiful. I had like a meeting that I had to go to, which makes me sound so adult. Um, but yeah, it was like, do I transit home or do I walk home? I ended up walking home and I was like, this is beautiful. It felt really good to like be out um, walking around in the nice weather. I even wore like my moto jacket, my moto like leather jacket, which, you know, to me, that's a sign of like good weather when I don't have to wear like a big bulky winter coat. Mingyu has his like little in-ear kind of piece in, but for the sake of this, I'm just gonna draw like not that, like I'm just gonna draw ear cause we don't need to do that. You know what? Not to jinx myself, but I mean, I still haven't drawn the mouth yet, but I'm feeling kind of pretty good about the rest of this sketch. It's just, we just got to get the mouth. Obviously things can change when we start painting. That's also something that happens a lot is like the sketch looks right. And then once I start painting, something goes awry. So, but you know what? We have this on camera. We have evidence that the sketch was looking good at one point. <laughs> Okay, the mouth. Let's see. Let's try again. So what's happening is the inside of the top lip is quite curved up, right? And then the bottom lip on the inside, it's actually quite straight. 
across the bottom. And then somehow we can see the top teeth and a little bit of the bottom teeth. I don't know. Oh my God, it's so hard. I'm like trying to rationalize my thinking, but. Okay, that's definitely better than earlier, for sure. Uh, I'm currently working on my graphic novel assignment for my uni course. I'm so glad I have you as company while I work. Oh my God, that's so cool. But also I'm sure a lot of work. So happy to keep you company on that. It's gonna rain where I am. Aw, yeah, Seattle was rainy, guys. I mean, I guess I should have known and I did bring an umbrella and made sure to wear shoes that were, like boots that were waterproof, but like it rained so much when we were there. It was such a bummer and it was cold. Like it was as cold as Toronto but maybe worse because it was raining so much. Like I was a little sad. I didn't dress properly for it in terms of like warmth. Um, what kind of sketchbook are you using right now? This is the Arteza watercolor sketchbook. I should have it linked in the description for you. Um, you said, uh, transit curious, do you have a driver's license? This is coming from an Ohioan with no public transit. I do not have a driver's license um, and the reason for that is because driving sounds terrifying to me but also when you live in Toronto you don't necessarily need to have a driver's license like I mean I guess it does depend on where you live in Toronto and like what you do for work and all that stuff but for me as a work from home person and living essentially downtown Toronto like having a car is like doesn't make sense because it's like such a congested city and everything like so many things are in walking distance and the yeah the subway and the public transit is not perfect definitely not perfect but honestly will be faster and more efficient than driving most of the time because like trying to find parking getting through traffic like weaving in and out of all the pedestrians like yeah parking is a big thing uh in terms of like it's expensive and hard to find sometimes so it's just like not it does not make sense uh for me to have a driver's license i mean there are definitely cases where sometimes when i'm traveling with people or if there's you know like someone wants to do like a little road trip or something and that's when a driver's license would be handy unfortunately i am not uh able to contribute <laughs> and i know that it's like a very valuable skill to have but like i just don't have a need for it right now so i don't feel very pressed to to get in on that I went to the well this weekend and parking was $18. $18? How long were you there for? Also, Caroline, please tell me what you think of the well. I feel like I'm seeing a lot of TikToks about it and I'm not really sure how to feel about it. Um, and the TikToks are, can be deceiving. Let me know what you think about it. I haven't been there yet. Um, Toronto has good transit, right? I mean, yes, it's like, definitely imperfect like when I compare it to like Japan like hello Japan is like in another they're living in the future um but like yeah the the public transit here runs like quite frequently it goes to like a lot of different places and areas uh it's three I think three dollars and 25 cents to get anywhere um yeah so I mean like when you compare it to uh, a lot of other places, like Renee said, Ohio has no public transit. Like, I'm very thankful to have the public transit that we do have. I used to live in Kingston, Ontario, when I was in college, and that public transport, that public trans, transit sucked. 
um, and I did have to rely on it. So I guess when I put it in, per in perspective, Toronto Transit is pretty good. But when you live here for a long time, it's easy to be like, oh my god, it's such a nightmare. Um, which it can be. There's definitely times where it can be. But in in comparison to a lot of places and when I put it into perspective, it's pretty good. <laughs> okay, I think we actually have landed on a sketch that I'm fairly pleased with. Hello, success. Um, so what I'm gonna do now, I guess I'll draw, mm, eh, I don't need to draw much of this cloth. Yeah, this is enough actually. Um, okay, so the next thing I wanna do, oh yeah, Minkyo I guess has no ear piercings. Hmm. And, oh yes, the classic super long sideburns that K-pop idols always have. Actually, I'm realizing, I think the ear, now that I've like put this little sideburn in, I think the thing, I think his ear actually has to go further back a little bit. That's something I realize that I do oftentimes too, is I, um, make the ears a lot kind of closer in than they're supposed to be. So, oh yeah, the ear is a little lower. Got to pay attention to that. So it's a bit kind of more down here and not super big. I think my original sketch of his ear there was too big as well. I'm just winging the ear because I... I don't feel like I want to include the in-ear thing. Okay, and then... There. I think that's more. I wished in a place, I wish I lived in a place with a lot of options besides driving. Edmonton isn't as good, but I don't drive either for that reason. <laughs> I'm practically trapped on campus. Aw, that sucks. I was there for like two-ish hours, so 18 felt crazy. I like the vibes of the well, and I think it would be nice to walk around in the spring, but it's deaf overhyped. Okay, that's kind of the sense I got, for sure. I think it's a nice idea, but seems kind of weird for a place like Toronto, where like a third of our year is quite cold <laughs> um to have like an open concept space like that like the well like these like kind of open concept mall walking areas like those plate that makes sense for like warm places uh or places that have like mild weather all year round but toronto like who how how much use is it gonna have in the winter i don't know anyway um no judgment about the license. I'm low-key jealous. All my Europe friends have public transit and it sounds wonderful. Yeah, it is interesting. Like, my friend had visited from Ottawa. She was she lives in Ottawa and that place is like much more driving central. And um, yeah, it was, it, it was interesting how like for me and my friends living in Toronto, like we hop from place to place to place to place because everything's so close together. Like we'll be like, okay, for lunch we'll go here, then we'll go to the island and then we'll pop over to here for dinner and then we'll go here for dessert. Like it's like a full day of like a billion places. And for her, she was like, for for like where she lives, like where it's driving, like you kind of just pick one place, you all meet there, you hang out for a couple hours and then you all go home. Um, cause like, yeah, the, it's so cumbersome to like get in the car and pick parking and yada, yada, yada. So like, it's just like, uh, totally different lifestyles when you kind of factor those things in. Is Japan living in the future or are we living in the past? <laughs> Probably both, honestly. His hairline is so perfect. It looks like a wig. Oh my God. Okay. This is, this has been a thing for me because as someone who 
you know, watches a lot of K-pop stuff now, and I'm, Mingyu is my bias, so I'm always like, just like, you know, and as an artist, I'm like really paying attention. And that was something that I was really fixated on. I was like, how in the heck is this hairline so perfect? And like, he himself is already perfect, so it's just like, how, what is going on with this hairline? It's like, immaculate. Um, and something that I discovered is a combination of things. So one, makeup artists, sometimes do the hairline like they'll, they'll they kind of fill in the hairline to make it look fuller and more perfect the other thing is like extensions like hair extensions not even just like the long k-pop girly extensions like i've seen people you know they like they can do teeny little strands like in like short haircuts too um and then the other thing is hair transplants um like you know yeah perfecting that hairline bringing it down a little bit more you know like it's all these like very little, little, little like manicured things. Um, who is to say? He could just be like blessed by God and had perfect genes, but that's something to keep in mind, you know, when you see these perfect Hollywood K pop idols and you're like, why don't I look like that? And it's like, you could if you had enough money. <laughs> I feel like people will choose the Ean Center over the well. Yeah, the Ean Center has like a lot to offer. It's indoors. Um, <laughs> so I get it. And more central, like the well is kind of further south. Okay, now that I'm, I think the, the sketch is good. We're gonna use, now we're gonna use my Faber Castell um, to kind of like perfect, or no, uh, like, solidify the sketch because this will hold up better with when we start painting with watercolors and then we can actually paint which is a lot of pressure but i believe in us um and not canadian weather i'm a passenger in the good banks i'm a passenger in the good bank struggle bus it is wonderful cars can be expensive like why <laughs> yeah oh uh, shoot hello everyone popping in just for a moment i'm technically working also tina it was wonderful seeing you at emerald city comic con i try my best uh not to be too awkward oh emily thanks so much for coming by oh my god seriously like people like you like who came by my table really like just made it all worth it like i feel like my heart is so full like when I meet people who are like oh I follow you on YouTube or you help me like in my art journey or um, like just people who recognize me like it was such a surreal thing um, like so so cool like people gave me fan art people brought me little like trinkets and gifts and handwritten cards and stuff like it was so so nice um, yeah really really sweet my roomie got me into the untamed and uh, the hairlines. Even the children have these perfect triangular hairlines. It's always funny to me. Oh my god. Okay. Yes. I've, um, admittedly, I haven't like committed to watching all of the Untamed. I kind of fell off because like I don't know the pacing was like really slow. But um, yes, the hairlines are like, um, <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> they are beautiful. The 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 people in the Untamed are beautiful. Update. Drawing not going too bad, but I forgot how to draw lips well enough. I'm struggling. Oh no! Mila, I believe. I believe. Honestly, it's Sungwa, so I'm sure no matter what, he will look beautiful anyway. Okay. Oh, I think I might have... You know what? Oh my gosh. I was like so confident that I did the nose right, but now I'm like, maybe I didn't. Ugh. Sometimes when I look at Mingyu, it just makes me mad. Like he is truly blessed. He is so handsome. Okay, yes, okay, I think that's, ooh, that is satisfying. Getting in these like more defined Y'all, I hope I'm not jinxing this, but I think it's turning out. We'll see when we start 
painting, but I'm feeling good about this. Maybe, see, now I'm glad I did the warm up sketch. I think that helped because this didn't really look like Jungkook, but like, you know, we were warming up, getting into it. I think we're, I think it paid off. I hope. <laughs> Famous last words. Um, Up, uh, Untamed is so good, but I get you on the pacing. I've been told that like, I just have to get past like the flashback arc and then it really starts to roll. And I get that there's a lot of world building exposition that has to happen cause there's just like a lot of uh, intricacies in this universe. And like I, this was like, I, I'm not as familiar with like Chinese dramas and lore. So like, it was a lot for me to be like, what is, what are they talking about? Like what's going on? Um, and there was like so many characters, but um, yeah, I've, I've heard amazing things about the series. So we'll, we'll see maybe. Um, I feel like I am enjoying the animated uh, Heaven's Official's Blessing. So maybe I just need to watch the animated version of the Untamed, I don't know, we'll see. I think I also, yeah, I think I made this side of the mouth come out too far. Yes, okay. I think that's. By golly, I think we're on to something, friends. Okay. The teeth, the tooth. I think the thing with teeth is especially when they're like you don't see a lot of them like it's really subtle you can just kind of treat them like a big shape for the most part to be honest i think okay honestly how dare he how dare he be so handsome it's kind of rude honestly And then I'm gonna draw in the shadow cause that's like very big part of this. I'm gonna lift some of the excess with the kneadable eraser just cause I don't want it to smudge around when I start painting. <sighs> the pressure, guys. It's looking so good. Thank you. It was my first dive into sea dramas, and now I watch too many. Honestly, yeah, the animated version is quicker paced, but also changes parts of the story. Animated is more book accurate. Ah, okay, okay, okay. This is looking so beautiful. Thank you. It's looking so good. I think you have the perfect balance between realism and stylized portrait. Maybe it's the eyes. I don't know. I think, yeah, usually the eyes for me, like, even though I don't necessarily am conscious of it, that I always make them just a slightly, slightly bigger. Um, so that's probably what it is. And that's when it's like, that's when your just like innate style comes to come in, comes into play. Like I'm not consciously trying to make him look stylized. I am actually like just paying attention to the photo, but that's where, you know, when people are like, how do I find my art style? Like it just comes naturally, but thank you so much. <laughs> um, it's so satisfying to watch. Thank you. Have you read fourth wing? If you read fantasy, that is, I have heard about fourth wing. I have not read it. I'm terrible for, um, keeping up with books. Unfortunately, like I, I started audiobooks hoping that that would get me to like read more or like get into novels more, but it's just not, I don't know what it is. I just can't seem to retain enough um, attention for it, even though I enjoy them. Um, yeah, I listened to The Six of Crows and I loved it. And I mean, some of the narration was iffy, but like the book itself I enjoyed. Uh, and then I still need to listen to the second one. Also, I'm still really salty that they canceled the show because I felt like the casting was perfect 
for the Six of Crows characters. Like, I didn't, I wasn't super invested in the Shadow and Bone characters anymore at that point, but I really wanted a Six of Crows series, and I think that was the intention. But unfortunately, it got canceled, so. Womp womp. Also, you have a really good mic. I love the ASMR. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad. <laughs> also, Sad Shadow and Bone was canceled, right? To me, art style is the amalgamation of an artist's preferred shortcuts. If there were no shortcuts, it would be 100% photorealistic art. Ooh, that is a really good way to explain it, Claudia. Oh, Claudie? Claudie? Um, oh, no, though I haven't watched Shadow and Bone in a while. Yeah, it got canceled. Sad, sad. Yeah, the shortcuts. That's actually a really good way to describe it. Cause like, yeah, that's, that is kind of where style comes from is like how you interpret things in a more kind of simplified way. Oh yeah, the other thing I actually that I didn't do was the shape of the hairline. I actually it's like a little bit more it kind of comes in over here a little bit more. Got to pay attention to those little details cuz that's the <laughs> that's what makes our break like it could be Mingyu or it could be a different idol if we got to make sure we Pay attention to those little distinctions. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. All right. For for myself, I think I'm going to take a photo because it is highly possible I'm going to screw this up with paint. So just for myself, I am also going to take a photo while it's... Uh, while I'm like, it's, it looks like him. Okay. And for reference, it might also be like, hey, this is what went wrong. <laughs> Hydration reminder, friends. How long have you been drawing this face? Oh my gosh, it's kind of embarrassing. Um, I think like an hour. <laughs> to be fair, I did this one first. I did this first. This was like an hour, I think. This is like another hour. I don't know. Um, I also did an inter. I did like a little intermission of like showing off my sketchbook too. <laughs> so, yeah, we've been here for a while. I'm pretty slow, uh, but also like the pressure of trying to get the likeness is there too. I feel like if I wasn't um, overly concerned about the likeness, I probably would have been a little faster. Also, getting caught up in the chat room in a good way. When you said hydration, my mind immediately went plump glowing hydration boost from Wanyong. Oh, <laughs> cute. Okay, thanks. I thought I was late to the party. Oh no, you're good. You're good. I'm just really slow. Um, okay, so let's bust out the paints. Oh my god, I'm so nervous about this, you guys. Okay, I'm trying to figure out how to rearrange my desk here to fit the paints on my desk, but also so you guys can see it. Um, Cause the sketchbook is a little bit, it's kind of big, so. Okay, sure, yes. Okay. 
The sketchbook, well maybe the, it's not the sketchbook as big, as the palette takes up a lot of room or space. I think that's, that's what it is. Anyway. Also, style develops without you even realizing it until you look at all your art as a whole and then you start to realize it. Yes, absolutely. And it's always changing. Like, it's always morphing and changing. Evolving. Okay, I got my water here. Using my brushes. Oh, actually, okay, wait. I'm sorry. Before we start painting, I do need to take a moment to do a little bit of... Hold on. So some of you might already know this, but I have teamed up with Trova Trip to do a I'm a Wonder retreat to Korea this year. I'm so excited about it. We got a new sign up uh, last week, which I was like, oh my God, yay. I'm happy to have more people join. I would love for you guys to come with us. It's going to be, we're going to be going to Seoul and Busan. It's going to be September 25th to October 1st. So one week basically. And it is going to be so much freaking fun. Um, the, I have a little like breakdown of some of the itinerary because we're it's i get it it is like definitely not cheap to go korea is somewhere i've been really wanting to go to for a little while and this will be my first time going so i think that'll be really cool to be able to experience with some of you guys and it's like kind of i think a perfect trifecta of like all of my interests like K-pop, there's definitely going to be like lots of cute stationery and fashion and food and sightseeing. Um, so I just wanted to go through some of the things with you guys. Now, let me see if I did this correctly. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so... Day one, we will, basically everyone comes to the hotel and then we will get some Korean barbecue to like get acquainted with everybody. And then we'll be going to Hongdae for some shopping, which is gonna have like lots of amazing like fashion and beauty products and like a mix of like unique kind of boutique stuff. But also I think there's gonna be some secondhand thrifting as well. Um, day two, we're gonna be going to this palace. I'm not gonna pronounce the name because honestly it's like the longest word I've ever seen and I'm probably gonna butcher the pronunciation. Um, but this palace is um, actually where BTS had performed. They did a live performance there. So I think that'll be really cool. And something that I learned from Japan is these like monuments and like these palaces and temples and stuff, like the scale of it is truly something you have to experience in person. It is crazy. Um, and then we're going to go up the, uh, Namsan Tower and we're actually going to take a cable car ride up. It's going to be so like, just like really, really beautiful views of the city. Day three, we're going to be going to Seoul Forest and there's apparently deer there, which I think will be so cute. I got to see deer when I was in Japan as well. And they are just like they're just so cute to see in person um and it's nice to like see nature i love seeing nature like within cities it's so cool um and then we're also going to go up to the Seoul sky observatory which gets you like a 360 view of the cityscape and the mountains and you see the han river again it's just one of those things where like just seeing um, things in a different perspective is like so fascinating and then we get to take a train to Busan not without zo no zombies I love that movie but hopefully no zombies on our ride over there um, and then day four in Busan we will be going to this Gamcheong culture village which I think is so cool like the photo I have up here is this like really really colorful neighborhood kind of like atop these mountains um it just like the landscape is something that i've never seen in like canada so i think that'll be really really cool um there's also apparently a lot of street art there as well um and then we'll be going to make some traditional bracelets a little bracelet workshop which i think will be so cute and then we're gonna go to um this huge shopping center which has apparently an indoor ice rink, a spa, a cinema, and like obviously lots of shopping to do. 
and day five korea is really really known for coffee shops so definitely going to be hitting up this beautiful coffee shop that has like this view of the water and gonna see this temple um beautiful so excited um and then day six we're going to be going to the color pool museum which is like very very instagrammable lots of really cool like installations i love a good like art museum installation like full kind of room effect type of museum so really excited for that and we're going to be going to do a fun costume photo shoot i love doing photo shoots it's gonna be so cute and such like a nice commemorative thing for the trip and then at the end we're going to be doing a farewell dinner in the park a little picnic in the park which i think will be so wholesome um I wish I could go, but it's in the middle of the semester for me. Oh, I'm so sorry. I know it's really tough because like I know a lot of you guys are students and September is obviously like when people are in school. But when I was doing the surveys, September was one of the most popular picks for like travel time and weather wise, it's like very nice because it's not super hot, but it's not winter yet. Oh, that would be so much fun. I would go, but I'll be in school instead. I totally get that. I 1000% want to go. I did Thailand with a group last year. I'll know closer to the date to see how my dog is recovering from hip surgery. Aw, I hope your dog is doing okay. That's such a stressful thing to deal with. I understand that like with pets, like they're basically family. So I totally get that. But it's so cool that you did a trip to Thailand last year. And that's the thing about these Trova trips is like, I know some people are worried about like how legit they are. Um, as as we see like someone did a trip to thailand with another group and if you guys are familiar with with cindy um she's a youtuber a book book talk to book booktuber <laughs> um she's done several trips with trova trip um in terms of artists uh sophie mcpike just um did uh like confirmed one to ireland uh sarah tepes um has done several to like europe and i think she has one in japan um so like yeah trova trip is like a trusted company that like organizes a lot of these trips and the thing about what's like in the price because that's the thing is like i know that it is definitely pricey but there's a lot that's included in the price um including like a six night stay at three to five uh star hotels you get some breakfast and some dinners all the city transfers because we're going to be like you doing a lot of transiting um and there's all the activities and like more that i just listed are all included in the price um and there's a local guide with us the whole time so you don't have to worry about like not knowing the language that's like a huge thing with traveling to new countries is like not knowing the language and being able to navigate the city and like figure out their transit someone will be with us the whole time um and you'll get to hang out with me which i think is a nice little bonus um and yeah the thing about traveling is like it's so daunting planning all that stuff like picking the itinerary booking all of those tickets and restaurants and all that kind of stuff but like trova trip takes care of all of that all you have to do is like fly out there and come hang out with us so yeah and i the way that i structure this trip is that you don't have to be a k-pop fan obviously um and you don't even have to be an artist either i know that most of you are artists but i know i have a number of people who are not necessarily artists in my community so you don't have to be an artist you can just come and hang out um that sounds amazing i'd love to do something like this meeting a group of people like that seems so fun yeah right that's like to me like that's why i wanted to talk about well like why i choose to talk about the trip especially in these live streams is because like we clearly all like have a lot of similar interests and even though like we're all technically strangers like we all just like get along because there's like so many overlapping uh commonalities and i feel like this like good vibe would be perfect for a trip because yeah like traveling while the place that you go to is important and the things that you do like the people you're with is like what really makes the trip and like making those memories with people and for me like as an adult like making new friends as an adult when you're not like in school or especially me as a self-employed person like it's a lot more difficult to meet new people and i know that a lot of other adults struggle that with that too but this is like the perfect way to like 
find like it's like a perfect filter <laughs> of like finding like-minded people um to like do this like really incredible experience with and I know like I've heard people say like I want to travel I want to do these things but I have no one to go with um like you know I am a single girly I have been single for like three years and being single is not going to stop me from living my life in fact I think that I have done more things as a single person than I did when I had a partner <laughs> um because like just like yeah building those friendships and just like going out on a limb and like doing these things um yeah you could come alone and then come out of it with like 10 new friends essentially um you could also come with somebody um that could be really cool too if you are like intimidated by coming alone but as we know with these live streams i am a chatty bitch so if you're like really introverted and you're like scared at the idea of like meeting all these strangers all at once like you don't have to say a thing honestly i can talk to a wall um like i will i will be the extrovert i'll i'll be the extrovert lighthouse um <laughs> to take care of all of all of you guys um yes making friends as an adult is rough it's hard it is really hard like everyone's busy everyone's doing different things and like for me like as i get older some of my friends that i've had for so long like they're moving on into different parts of their life like they're getting married they're buying houses they're moving out of the city they're having kids and like that's great and i'm really happy for them but that's not where i'm in my life and so there's just like there ends up being this kind of disconnect and you end up drifting because you're just doing different things um so i feel like this trip would be really bringing in all these people together that like are potentially like, in like you know similar parts of their lives um but you know i remember in a previous live stream like uh someone mentioning that they were a single mom and they like this would be like a perfect thing for them to like as a little like treat to themselves and like you know a little escapism i guess so like yeah you could be in like all different walks of life but i think our love of like art k-pop anime media like it all bring us together you know um oh for sure i haven't made a new friend in years as an adult um feels like there'd be a lot to talk about too exactly right like i do when i do these live streams like they go for like four hours and like we talk about literally like a bajillion different topics um oh gosh this seems like so much fun i'm super introverted but once it's been an hour or two i will not shut my mouth yes 100 percent. like i definitely have friends like that where when they're in a group new group setting and like they don't know a lot of people they're like super quiet but then once you become comfortable like introverts they could be like the loudest person um <laughs> and i love that um would there perhaps be another trip after this one um you could also meet the love of your life it's true you never know that'd be amazing I would love to be a matchmaker or like have a catalyst in matchmaking. <laughs> um, would there perhaps be another trip after this one? I really want to be able to do more of these, but the caveat is this one has to happen in order for there to be more. Um, so like technically this trip isn't confirmed yet. Um, what happens is we need to have a minimum of 10 people sign up and then the trip is confirmed and then we get to go and then I can potentially look into doing other ones in the future, going to different countries and all that. But this one has to be successful first. Um, and yeah, so right now we do have a few signups, which I'm really excited about, but we have to hit 10. Um, it can go up to 24. And yeah, so like it's not until September 25th, but the sooner you book, the better it is because you'll have more time to pay off the full amount and it's good to like start looking into flights um, and all that stuff sooner rather than later and you technically have like yeah several months to pay it off and um with uh through a firm you can technically extend your payment plan if you if you know if you need more time and um yeah so that's my little my little plug i'm going to continue to talk about the trip over time and obviously feel free to let me know any questions that you have um at any point because i think it would be so so cool to do this i would love to be able to do more and go to different countries and um yeah so if you have any concerns like definitely let me know and i will be happy to 
uh, yeah, like just answer any concerns that you might have and maybe alleviate any concerns or fears that you might have about the trip. Um, but yeah, for me as someone who just feels like so connected to you as an audience, like it'd be so cool to like bring the live stream into real life. <laughs> I'm an extroverted introvert. Mm, yes, yes, yes. I think I'm an ambivert. I definitely think I'm right in the middle. Like I thrive in uh, certain environments with other people, but I also do need some alone time to recharge. So like I definitely am both. Um, I won't be able to join you guys on this trip. It would have been a perfect birthday trip, but it's financially not possible this year. But I really hope you can do one next year too. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. I think it would be so cool to be able to like hit different countries and do multiples of these. I think it would be like, yeah, really, really amazing. Um, something that I haven't technically included in the itinerary yet officially, but I thought about literally last night is, so, so far the itinerary is like, just is like food, sightseeing, museums, etc. Um, I'm not doing like an art tutorial or anything like that. But when I was like really thinking about it on the sixth day when we do our picnic, I was thinking that would be the perfect day. Like it's like the kind of final thing on the itinerary. Um, I think it'd be perfect if we could have a little like sketchbook session in the in the park at the picnic um, and like, you know, use our like ticket stubs and like, you know, photos or whatever and do a little doodle, kind of like a monthly favorites, but like for the trip. Um, I think that would be really, really cute. So that's something I'm gonna talk to my trip advisor or whatever with um, on Monday. I'm having a meeting with him and then I will like do a more detailed discussion about what that's going to look like. But I just like literally had that idea last night. So that way we can incorporate some of the art element into the trip as well. And like, yeah, incorporate like my sketchbooking thing with it as well. Um, I won't be able to go for this trip, but if you're ever going back to Korea on a trip like this, I'm hopping on that. Aww. Thank you, thank you. Um, my goal is to visit the Louvre. Oh, I would love to go to the Louvre. Yeah, Europe would be really cool because I've actually never been to Europe before. Um, this sounds so fun, right? I think it would be so much fun. And then obviously for all my K-pop fans, we can go feral. Um, but obviously you don't need to be a K-pop fan to come. Um, much like this, much like this live stream, even though it's been presented as like K-pop uh, forward, it doesn't, I'm happy to talk about all the things. Honestly, if the trip wasn't during school year, I would happily go, but I don't know, it's not enough time to save up and I'm getting ready to graduate. Totally valid, totally valid. Yeah, I, I used to be a student, so I understand. I did not do any traveling when I was a student. It's tough. But anyway, thank you so much for listening to me ramble, friends. Now we can get back to our man Mingyu. Yeah, link in the description for more details about the trip. And um, yeah, you still have time to think about it. Um, happy to have you if you decide to come. Um, so let's, okay, I think how I want to do this because I am painting with watercolors and we have to think about like dry time and things like that. I think I want to start with the shadows actually. Um, so I really love that pink that's coming through. So I think what I'm actually going to do is use this first, this beautiful pink Oh, I totally forgot my little water dropper. Hold on. Water dropper. This is my preferred way of like adding water to my paints. I always get questions about it. They're like, what's in there? I'm like, it's just, it's just water. Just tap water. <laughs> I want to go to Italy so bad. I declined a free trip offered by my family a few years ago and have big regrets. Aw, that's such a bummer. Oh my gosh. But who's to say you won't have another opportunity to go? I mean, maybe not free, but Italy will still be there. Personally, I think that... Um, the other, the other saving grace potentially is that 
maybe when you do finally get the chance to go to Europe, maybe you can go with friends or a partner. I think that like, I mean, obviously it depends on the relationship you have with your family, but I do think that traveling with family versus like a partner or friends is very different. Um, it's just like a very different experience. So that could potentially be a silver lining to think about. Yeah, the thing about this portrait is I'm not really concerned about getting the colors uh, exactly right. It's more about capturing the likeness. So I'm mostly paying attention to the values more than the actual color. But I do love how kind of the, the pink lighting on this side of his face so I am going for that but not like you know exact and so far yeah this smoother paper seems to be holding up okay I mean obviously we haven't done a ton of water and layers just yet that's the other thing too actually is I'm going to try and avoid doing too many layers because I know that this paper is like not perfect for holding a lot of watercolor the price makes sense though because you don't have to worry about doing everything yourself exactly exactly because so much time has to be put into planning a trip like that um like i got really really lucky with my japan trip that my friends ended up doing a lot of the planning which like they were the saving grace because they had been there before and they helped plan the itinerary and all the logistics and stuff but like having to do that yourself is so daunting and so time consuming especially for a country that you're not familiar with like transit is scary to figure out like i was like, even when I go to New York, which is, like, I feel, like, probably less intimidating than Japan or Korea in terms of transit. Like, I'm always really worried about getting lost and, like, getting on the wrong train. But with Trova Trip, like, we will have a guide with us so they will know exactly where we need to go. <laughs> I've never traveled with friends, but I'd love to. Yes, it's very fun. Um, but you do have to make sure that you and your friends kind of have a similar like goal for the trip or also like um like everyone travels a little differently some people are like more fast paced some are more leisure so so there's the things to pay attention to as well and that goes for like any group of um any group of like travel buddies i'm back and riding a train lol just thought to pop back in and see how it's going oh hello welcome welcome yes we are finally painting finally <laughs> it took it took me a while to get here but we're finally getting there um it's happening
I live in Scotland, so I'm always craving somewhere completely different. Mmm, yes, totally. Imagine me drawing handsome and beautiful characters like this. I'll be in my room for two days for one piece. <laughs> I mean, we have been for a couple here for a couple hours of me working on this. <laughs> the essence of Mingyu is really coming through. Essence of Mingyu sounds like a strange perfume. <laughs> well, thank you. But also, you know there would be a huge line to buy a perfume called Essence of Mingyu. I'd be first in line, for sure. <laughs> that shit would sell out. <laughs> Being a multi-stand in K-pop is difficult. It's like a full-time job. I always love your drawing streams. Thank you so much, Angelica. Yes, it is a full-time job being a multi-stand. Like, it is insane. Um, the thing that I have to accept is that I will not be able to catch everything. Um, like, I just have to accept, like, I'm not going to see every Instagram post, every vlog, every, you know, um, and that's okay. Honestly, that's probably healthier. Um, but yeah, it is, ex it's, it's a lot, but there is never a shortage of content. That's for sure. Shortage of money, perhaps. <laughs> But yeah, this is like, the shading part is very, you gotta be really careful because if you place, you know, a shadow in the wrong, in the wrong spot, it can really change the shape of the face, which is why when I pick a reference photo, I make sure the shadows are very clear because it just makes capturing this person easier. I'd be in that line definitely. <laughs> Thank you for the company, Tina. I'll have to go now because my sister is almost here to start our road trip. I hope you have a good rest of the day, everyone. Thanks, Brooklyn. Have a good road trip. I love your color choices. Gives me some spring inspiration. Oh yes, I definitely am in spring mode. Even my shirt today, like, is very spring. Um, I was saying earlier that I've been listening to a lot of "To Us." Uh, TWS to us uh, the the new K-pop boy group and their music is very like sunshine spring vibes um, oh you're still streaming I am the artistic cryptid cryptid I as as live streams go I, I hang out here for quite a while <laughs> But I do think I might have to step away for just a second to get more water because I did a lot of talking um, in my water cup is empty so i will do that in just a second i i feel really good about this i'm so happy i mean there's still time to screw it up but so far it's looking pretty close it's not exact but i think so far, I can say that the 17 fans will probably be able to recognize him. That's the key element here. Okay. Let me, and this will actually give me just like a little moment to let that dry, but I'm gonna go grab some more water. I'll be right back.
I was watching at the beginning, but I got interrupted by a car salesman trying to buy my car. I just need to upgrade its software and a checkup. Then I got distracted by errands. Totally valid. Yes, you, um, you honestly, you're catching at us at a good time because I'm finally painting. <laughs> I spend so much time on the sketch. So you're getting here when I'm actually getting to the painting portion, which is pretty exciting. Um, I think, yeah, I think what I'll do is I'm just gonna keep going with this pink or yeah. I'm working in my junk journal while watching this stream. Oh, nice. Love, love that. I. wish I journaled because it's such a nice way to like keep track of things but I guess my um my monthly favorites kind of served as that similarly not that I do them anymore but you know nice thing about this sketchbook paper from my experience is that the paints like they don't really budge after you've laid them down and which is like good and bad it's good because when you want to layer it's not going to lift and move around but you really have to commit because um, you can't do a lot of like lifting or changing things around um, so that's something that I am now using to my advantage um, hence why I decided to start with the shadows because I knew um, I would be able to layer fairly well after the fact without a lot of lifting Y'all, it's coming together. I think it's happening. <laughs> I'm like surprising myself. <laughs> Switch to my laptop to watch this bigger while I do some sketches. Aw, yay. Um, what sketchbook? This is the Arteza watercolor sketchbook. It's uh, I should have it linked in my description. But yeah, one side of the page is smooth and then the other side is textured. And this is my first time using the smooth side for watercolor and so far it's actually not too bad. Um, but especially particularly because I'm using it in a very careful way. I would definitely not use this um, in the way that I would use like typical watercolor paper. If anything, I would describe it more like a mixed media paper. Um, but I guess like, because I know it's, uh, because I'm like familiar with it now, I'm trying to be more intentional about the paints and trying to minimize the amount of layers if I can help it 
But I think that's where the colored pencils will come in if I need to, just cause I know, yeah, this paper doesn't handle like a ton of water. But like, it looks like him. I think I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm amazed. I'm back, wow, so pretty. <laughs> Thank you, Ian. <laughs> yeah, that's the key. I'm like, okay, let me, let me take a really quick pause while we let it dry for a second. But like, I was, I did some sketches of Mingyu in this sketchbook and they were bad. Um, or actually, no, I think one of them was okay. And one of them was really bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, not only does it not look like him, he looks ugly. And that's like a crime because this man is very handsome. So I had this one, which like, at least he looks handsome but it didn't quite look like him like i got something off and then i did this one and i was like i am so sorry i do not know what happened like the it's just everything is weird everything looks so weird like i don't know how um i managed to do that but anyway the ming hao ones are actually pretty good i did um i have two ming hao's here i really like this one this one turned out really cute ming hao in a mullet is like just the way it looks so good on him um holding a little froggy plushie. <laughs> I also really like the hands. Um, of course I had to draw his little 17 ring and the nail polish. Um, yeah, I have like a whole page. I've been doing all the 17 members slowly but surely I've been filling like a whole page. Uh, let me zoom out so you can see. Ba -ba -ba. So we got Uzi mixed mixed options here i think this last one is i guess it's more true to what he looks like right now with the long hair um i actually really like uzi with the short hair but you know not that he looks bad with long hair but i think i actually prefer the short hair uh dk i actually really like this first one this first dk the other ones are okay this one's this last one was bad this was actually a disaster that one don't look at that one <laughs> froggy everyone loves the froggy of course wanu hoshi 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 was actually pretty good except for this one in the corner love this first one um the two on the bottom not bad not bad wanu the first one turned out really good it's weird when the first one comes out i'm like so surprised by that Second one's not too bad. This one's good. This last one, not so much. Again, the open mouth. The open mouth is so hard to do. Um, June was a disaster. I feel so bad about it. The first one was good. The rest of them, not so much. Um, Joshua, mixed reviews. Mixed, <laughs> mixed reviews, mixed results. Escoops, escoops, uh, Jong-un, honey, honey, honey. Honey is hard. Um, Got him here, but yeah, I still have more to do. I have someone, Vernon, haven't drawn Dino yet. I need to fill up the pages, but yeah, it's been a journey. It's been a journey. <laughs> have you ever drawn or seen The Untamed from Netflix? Oh my God, we were talking about The Untamed earlier. Um, I have watched some of it, um, some of the original, um, like the original, not original. I've seen some of the Netflix live action of The Untamed. Um, I was saying that like, I really wanted to love it because everyone raves about it all the time, but I haven't, um, I haven't finished it cause I, I kind of just, the pacing was like so slow for me, but I've heard that it picks up. So to be determined. <laughs> But I do really love the, um, oh, let me zoom back. Let me zoom you guys back in. Um, I do really love the animated Heaven's Official Blessing. So I do potentially want to do fan art for that at some point, maybe. The guy you're drawing now looks like a Korean Chris Evans. <laughs> you know what? I can see it. I can see it. Just like extremely handsome. <laughs> Something about the nose. <laughs> that is so funny. For all my other Mingyu stands, let me know if you think the same. That's so funny. I mean, 
mean, yeah, both both handsome men for sure. Oh my god, I was just reading Heaven Official's Blessing a few minutes ago. Oh my god, I love it. <laughs> yeah, I have not read it. Um, just the I've just seen the animated version. But I quite enjoy it. The character design of Hua Cheng. <sighs> beautiful. So beautiful. I love the dark, long dark hair, the eye patch, the red umbrella, the red, all the red. It's just, it's so, so delicious. Every time, oh, Chris is Moa 100%. Everyone, uh, every time I look at the screen, it looks more and more like Mingyu. It's going super well. Yay, thank you, Mila. As someone who hasn't really listened to K-pop before, where would you recommend starting? <gasps> Alex. Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited about this. Okay, how how do we go about this? Where? What kind of music do you li normally listen to? I think that's a good way to start because K-pop honestly is in and of itself has a lot of different genres, I would say. Um, so I think that maybe trying to deduce what you already listen to right now might help us figure out where for you to begin. <laughs> am I killing it? I think I am. I'm amazed. I really, I was not thinking that this was going to go well. Oh, you were unfocused. Here we go. Okay. I'm feeling... I mean, this, it could still go downhill. You never know, right? Um, <laughs> okay, let's start adding in some darker tones. I think what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to like reactivate this purple that I have here and do that. Because, yeah, honestly, I think the more important thing with this is the values and the shapes and stuff as opposed to the color. I don't really care about um, matching the color necessarily so the next thing oh you know what i just realized the shirt the color of the shirt actually covers more of his neck than what i drew here but that's easily fixable but that's something i'm realizing just now Oh yeah, now that I'm adding a second layer of paints onto this, I can tell it's like a little bit fuzzier now, like it's not as sharp. So as I mentioned earlier with uh, like the, the paints um, or the this paper, like just not being able to handle like a ton of layers, I can see it now, like it's very fuzzy looking. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. I mean, it's also possible that it's just, it's still a tiny bit damp as well. But yeah, that's why I want to hopefully try and minimize the amount of layers I do. Oh yeah, very fuzzy edges now. Okay, I gotta be careful. So probably gonna end up using a lot of colored pen. I mean, honestly, I don't know if I need to do that much on this. Uh, Maybe I'll just start doing in doing the, the dark areas on him and then let the skin dry. So let's do the hair, that's easy enough. Um, make sure we get this hairline. Maybe I won't go too far in and I use colored pencils for... Oh my god, a friend of mine just got me into Dan Mei, Scum Villain, uh, and Heaven Official Blessing. And now I'm hooked on the tropes and currently making fan art of Wei Hu Xian and Chen Hyun. I hate her. <laughs> I love it. I'm sure your friend is like thriving right now that you're like, you got right into it. <laughs> I typically listen to alternative and indie pop and rock. Mmm, okay, okay, okay. Oh my god, Maria Nice, you are absolutely killing it. Thank you. Um, I bet it's looking moi, baby girl, baby girl. Nick. Is he Mingyu from 17? He is, he is. 
my man Mingyu. Um, oh my god, thank you. That's so cute of you. Okay, friends, fellow K-pop fans. For Alex, who typically listens to alternative and indie pop and rock, what K-pop group should we recommend? That's the thing too, actually, is even one k-pop group will have a multitude of different vibes <laughs> the rose day six. Oh yeah you guys are so correct um yeah the rose day six uh extraordinary heroes perhaps um i might even yeah extraordinary heroes yes yeah, yeah, yeah. See, so these recommendations, the reason why we're, we're recommending these is these are K bands. Um, so these groups actually like play instruments. Um, so it seems like a more like natural progression for you. Um, I started with ATs and Blackpink. Oh, my, my loves. I'm obsessed with ATs right now. Um, Blackpink is also great. I love Blackpink. Um, I saw them when they were here uh, last year. But those are like slightly more traditional K-pop groups, which I mean, again, but they do have like more of an edge, I would say. 80s, actually, it's so funny. Um, I joke that they're like the Linkin Park of K-pop because <laughs> they go a little more aggressive. They have, you know, like the rapper and they have singers. I mean, most K-pop groups do, but um, and I made this comparison and then, um, when I was doing like my 80s deep dive, Hongju actually did a cup, like a Linkin Park cover. And I was like, the math is mathy. Um, <laughs> one we, am I saying that right? One we, I feel like I'm saying that wrong. Also, Jenna B and say so neon oh i've never heard of those ones that's a hard one because i also listen to indie rock slash pop and alternative outside of k-pop yet i'll bop to girly bubblegum k-pop and i love it yeah 100 percent. like everybody i think listens to multitudes of genres i love um the girly pop stuff as well like i feel like new jeans has really dominated that space in like the best possible way like it's just like the catchiest pop music you'll ever listen to um so if you really want to just like deep dive into k-pop k-pop <laughs> but once you start with like a, a couple groups then you just naturally start to like cascade into the rest or it's possible that you might just not be into it i don't know um i remember when so my initial group that I got into was BTS. And then I remembered, this is going to be like such a random story, guys. But um, I did this six fan arts YouTube video where I drew Sonjun from the webtoon True Beauty. And someone was like, oh, this actually, you kind of made him look like Hyunjin from Stray Kids. And at the time, I only was familiar with BTS. And it was just a pure coincidence that this fictional character that I drew ended up looking like Hyunjin. And then, so out of curiosity, I looked it up and I was like, oh, it does look like Hyunjin. That's crazy. Um, or it does look like this guy that this person was telling me about. And then they were like, oh, they just had a comeback. Uh, God's Menu, you should check it out. And then I checked it out. And at first I was like, I don't know if I like this. Um, and now I love Stray Kids. Um, so sometimes it takes a few listens. Like the new Twice song, One Spark, initially I was like, I don't know how I feel about this. But the more I hear and the more I see the dance challenges, I'm like, I love it. It's so cute. <laughs> Lincoln Park of K-pop, Tina. <laughs> I will stand by that statement. <laughs> yes, he covered Numb. It was amazing. Oh my God, right? in the fit? I loved it. Before I got into K-pop, I exclusively listened to rock music and I find that the vibe is more important than just listening to rock bands. For example, I liked edgier pop groups with more mask concepts. Mmm, love all these recs. Thank you all. I'm excited. Oh my god, I'm so excited for you, Alex. <laughs> 
All my recs will be out of date, but groups like Block B are Monster X versus like early 17, which is much cuter. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we can definitely recommend older groups. Like, it's like, doesn't matter when it came out. You can still enjoy it. It's just like the heartbreak of being like, I won't be able to go see them in concert if they're like not touring or if they're not together anymore. My first group I got into was Shiny, so the music instantly grabbed my attention. Oh, also, I would really recommend the album Jack in the Box by J-Hope. It's a mix of rock and old school hip hop. It's a masterpiece. <gasps> Maitri, that is a really good recommendation. I loved Jack in the Box. So good. J-Hope is a BTS member, but his solo album Jack in the Box is just kiss. Yeah, so good. Yeah, really, really cool styles. And yeah, for me, definitely K-pop, it's about vibes for sure. Cause like, I don't know Korean, um, but like, am I here for uh, good vibes and cool sounding music? Absolutely. Half the time, I don't know what Western artists are saying either. Like the 1975 Ariana Grande, I don't know what they're saying. <laughs> it's technically English. <laughs> Okay, this hair is like very, very purple. I'm definitely gonna probably include actual black into it just cause Mingyu is currently kind of known to only rock black hair essentially. So um, I think I will include a black. I gotta let it dry though. So we'll come back to it. But yeah, now I'll just do little touches of purple in these areas that are really, really dark. And I think they've dried enough so it's not as feathery. Half of watercolor is waiting. <laughs> Hyunjin is so pretty. I can never do fan art of him. I know I'll do him dirty. <laughs> it is really um, intimidating for sure to try and capture his beauty. <laughs> stray kids are my boys. I love stray kids. I share a birthday with Bang Chan. That's like my claim to fame at this point. <laughs> I got introduced into K-pop because of stray kids and now I'm obsessed. Yes! Super Junior, I love so much in middle school. Aww! Y'all had to be there when he went blonde for the Boom Boom era. It was insane. Oh my god. Blonde, like white blonde Mingyu in Boom Boom. I I know that he has been rocking black hair like for a really long time now. And he's like so handsome that he doesn't have to do anything. But I would love to see the bleach blonde hair come back. I think that would, sh people would be shook. <laughs> Super Junior are the best. Heechul was my alt. Aww. Cute. Okay. Okay, I think I will take the risk and make the eyes purple too, and then we'll go in with black afterwards. Also, just as a little shameless plug, I want to mention that this entire time so far, I've only used this one paintbrush. Um, my paintbrush specifically, the Craft Demo, this is the size six. Um, I just, I love how versatile round brushes are. Like, you can get so many like details. 
but also it holds a fair amount of water as well. But yeah, the shine in the eyes is kind of subtle, so we don't want to go too much. We don't want to go into like super awoo <laughs> territory. I'll definitely be busting out finer paintbrushes in a bit, but for now I'm going to keep going with this one. It's pretty working out pretty well. Do you like drawing animals? I tried drawing my cat once and it was a nightmare material. <laughs> drawing animals is challenging for me. Um, I definitely like incorporating them into my illustrations. I want to do it more, uh, but yeah, they're definitely challenging for me. I have done it in the past, but I want to do it more for sure. I feel like Mama Moo's Hwasa's discography is so underrated. She has some masterpieces like her EP Maria is a no escape for me. I were you here when I drew when I showed the Hossa drawing that I did? Um, she is so cool. Like I admit, I'm like I'm not quite as familiar with a lot of um, female soloists, but uh, like work. I know she's part of Mamamoo. I'm like not as active with girl groups, but I know. Let me see where. Is she? Yes, I drew her here. Ta -da! Uh, it doesn't fully look like her, but technically it was her. Um, <laughs> I looked away to find some references on Pinterest and wow, it looks so good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, the camera is like making it look hella vibrant. <laughs> I mean, it's still fairly bright. Um, for me, but it's like really vibrant on camera. Um, you can always use gray to build up the black so you can see if you want it to dark or not. That's true. Yeah, that is true. That reminds me, my mother-in-law got me your brushes for my birthday. Oh my God, amazing. That's so sweet. Uh, oh my God, no, I didn't see it. It's so beautiful. Yay, thank you, thank you. Oh my gosh, I'm glad um, that you have my brushes. I hope that you enjoy using them. I'm just thinking. <laughs> okay, I think now I'm so nervous to mess it up. Um, I think perhaps I will go ahead and start using a finer paintbrush here, and let's let's like mix up whatever's going on on this palette here. I think it's just like yeah, like a like a really really muted dark purple now. So let's go with that. I think I'll mix in a little bit of. Or actually, you know what I should do? I should swatch it. Yes, okay, that's like a nice, juicy, dark, dark, dark purple. And this way, we can start getting some hair texture, although maybe it's actually, oh yeah, the paper is starting to behave a little weird now that I'm trying to like layer it. Like first pass, it's like super dark and juicy, but now I'm trying to like layer and it's like being all splotchy, which is good that I have um, colored pencils here because I think we're probably going to end up needing to use those at this point or soon, but let's do, let's get his eyebrows in. His eyebrows here are kind of light, so I actually might've went too dark on the brows, I'm trying to lift it with a clean paintbrush here. Okay, not, 
not too bad. I'm like so nervous. I'm messing it up now. Okay. The shadow under the jawline is the darkest, so I definitely want to bring that in. Some juicy eyebrows. <laughs> I do love some juicy eyebrows. Call them little squiggly worms. <laughs> okay, upper lash line, super important to get in. And I mentioned earlier that I wanted to pay attention to the fact that he doesn't have like a super dark or prominent um, lower lash line. So if this were like me just doing a portrait and not trying to capture someone's likeness, I would for sure go in and do like a bottom lash line. But because we're trying to get his likeness, I'm going to leave it for now. And maybe I'll use like a really light hand with some colored pencils. Also, the highlights in the eyes are looking too bright. So I'm going to try and kind of minimize them a little bit here. And now that all these like super, super dark tones are in, the like the shading that we did earlier looks so much lighter. Uh, so I think... I think I'll probably, yeah, let's start, let's get into some color pencils. Um, the thing that I'm recognizing as well is like, for a long time, my thought process was like, as soon as I started using color pencils, I couldn't go back to watercolors on a piece. But like, that's totally not the case. Like we can go back and forth, no problem. So let's, um, let's bring in, let's bring in, let's see. I use a lot of pink in this, which I actually quite enjoy. So let's continue that train. Oh my God, I started over at the beginning as one and was watching it two times and just caught up. He is looking so good. <laughs> Thanks, Amy. Oh my gosh. I must sound like a chipmunk when you're watching it at two times. So I'm going to do some hatching because I think that'll be really fun texture to include. I'm really enjoying actually this like kind of unconventional color palette. Gotta leave those areas for where the, the highlights are. The nose. 
stray? Are we straying far away? Does it look less like him now? Oh no. Maybe I just need to define this side. Sometimes you kind of just like get lost and then... Let me... Oh yeah, I forgot about the ear. Ah, uh, yes, the pencil makes it so satisfying. Which ones are you using? I am using, this is the Prismacolor Premier. Um, yeah, I think uh, mostly Prismacolor Premier. I also have the Faber-Castell Polychromos. Um, I should have them linked in the description. As some of you might know, I had purchased, um, I'd splurge and I bought uh, some Karandash, but it's like still in it's like really big box i have like a hard time like taking things out of its like nice packaging um and it takes up too much space on the desk so i'm not using those today but um yeah prismacolor i think is still my favorite the colors are just the pigment is so nice and they carry fluorescence which i love using it's so fun and you know we're gonna use it in this. Okay. Now that I'm kind of evaluating what's going on here, I think what needs to happen is I need to bring this eyebrow back and then the hairline, I think needs to be a little bit more like this and then this to come it's those little little details right yes I think like this oh yeah the black color pencil actually is really coming through here this you know what's so funny this purple this shade of purple is very much reminding me of Jungkook during their butter era. <laughs> it's definitely giving that, which is very funny. And then I'll draw some uh, individual hairs here. And then this. Oh, I think I kind of messed up his eyebrow over here. Like, I think, um, let's see, let's try again. down kind of downturn lashes here and then oh yeah that bright purple hair I loved it oh my god right and I remembered when we saw that my friend and I were both like humongous Gundam Seed fans and my friend particularly she was like obsessed with Atherin um Atherin's hair is more blue but like the length of it and the style of it during that era like it was definitely giving Atherin Zala which we were obsessed with because <laughs> honestly K-pop men like they're basically anime they're basically anime characters in real life He's looking so baby girl. It's so pretty. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I feel like um, typically Mingyu is not the baby girl, but in this case, it works because of the color scheme. I feel like with 17, who's the baby girl? Definitely Hoshi. Hoshi is very baby girl coded. <laughs> I love like the corners of the mouth. They kind of have this like upturn a little bit. Mm. 
Baby girl is a mindset, a way of life, if you will. <laughs> Absolutely. That reminds me of Pedro Pascal when they were asked, like, interviewers were asking him if he was uh, daddy. And he was like, daddy is a way of life. I think he said the same thing. I also love that the K-pop fans, like, we've assigned, like, certain... I don't know, tropes, I guess, or person, like, is tropes is the right word for certain idols? Like, Sungwa is obviously mother. Um, like, <laughs> just like these, like, silly little, I don't know how to describe it, but it's just so funny to me. I think I did it again. I think I made the eyes again like slightly more elongated than they should be um i did that with the jungle um drawing as well just slightly like i feel like when i cover this eye i'm like oh yeah 100 percent, i got it but then when i uncover it i'm like oh it's slightly off i think if i had made this eye just a tiny bit shorter and like slightly closer to the nose i think that's what's kind of throwing it off a little bit a little bit which i guess in theory like i could probably fix with gouache or like something but it's okay i'm gonna leave it for now because it's not too bad The other thing I guess is I made the eyebrows perhaps too dark, but that's also another thing that's a little bit challenging to rectify. Let me see if I can bring in like a light colored pencil and see if I can kind of lighten them a little bit. I could also just like darken a lot of areas to help kind of balance the visual weight. Daddy is a state of mind, lives rent free in my head. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Oh my god, me and Pedro basically twinning. I'll take it. <laughs> the term you're looking for is archetype. Yes, 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 yes. There are like different archetypes. Yes, thank you, thank you. That's exactly the word I was looking for. Oh, actually, whatever you just did with the nose makes it look a lot more like him. Oh, yay, thank you, thank you. Yeah, nostrils, like the shape of the nostrils is like, yeah. I made it just three hours late. <laughs> Love the top drawing. Thank you, Aaliyah. Thank you. Yes, honestly, okay. I can't believe I didn't get around to Sangwa. Wait, no, I was gonna, not Sangwa. Oh my god. Sangwa's clearly the bias wrecker. Like, Hongjun's gonna be so mad at me. I was planning to draw Hongjun too. Um, but I don't think we're gonna have time. I guess because I did the Jungkook drawing to start, but. It was definitely necessary. I don't think this would have turned out as successful as it did without it. Um, I just have Sungwa brain rot. Oh my gosh. Um, but okay, since we're not going to get to it today, I don't think maybe I'll try and squeeze in another live stream this. Am I going to have time for it? I don't know. Um, I'll just do it next time. But what I was going to draw was this Hongjoon because I, I knew I was going to do this Mingyu portrait here, but then I had a vision of like doing the Hongjun like full body fit pick like this, like a, a down the entire page. Um, because Hongjun is a fashion icon. So, and just like to mix it up, you know, and like the texture in this denim that he's wearing is like so cool. Um, and then I was gonna like save this corner for a different portrait for another time. Um, Sangwa brain rot is so valid. <laughs> oh my god, Cruella Jong, my beloved, right? Hongjun with the split Oreo Cruella hair. One of my favorites. Delicious. Um, 
that, the Oreo hair, and the mullet. I loved that mullet on him. Like the sandy colored mullet during like Say My Name. Obsessed, obsessed. Um, but yes, he's a fashionista. We live, love, laugh. Um, when he comes out with that fashion line, I'm buying it. Um, the cool thing about him and Sungwa, they both have talked about like multiple times that they like genderless fashion like that's how they describe their fashion sense is that it's genderless and that they actually like wearing like elements of like women's clothing and Hong Jun said that when he uh eventually you know wants to make a fashion line that it will be gender neutral um I love him for that my baby imagine mullet plus oreo hair <sighs> Would we survive? That would be too iconic. I love a mullet on K-pop boys. Me too, honestly. Like Felix with the silver mullet during God's Menu, obsessed. Love it. Love, 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 love it. But it has to be done right because as much as I love Jungkook, when he had his like wet, wavy mullet um like in the seven music video and that kind of era i was not feeling that mullet personally um so they're not not all mullets are created equal <laughs> the ultimate combo <laughs> They're both so cool. My have, my fave hair is the silver or red hair with black ends like the foxtail vibe. Ooh, yeah, so cool. So hard to maintain though, whenever there's like dip dyes or gradients and stuff. It always looks so fun though. <sighs> Talking about different hair colors makes me miss having colored bleached hair myself but it's so hard to maintain and expensive. Um, so for now, I'm gonna, for now I'm like, okay, I have bangs and like the hime kind of bits on the side. So like for me, that helps satisfy the like fun hairstyle itch, but having colored hair is so much fun. I do feel really bad for K-pop idols scalps though. Like <laughs> they'd be going through it. The maniacal laughter I laughed thinking about it, the perfect hairstyle. Truly. It'd be so good. It's genius. I miss having purplish hair. It's so fun, right? Oh, you know what might help actually? Has I was saying that his eyes, I feel like I needed to elongate them. If I just round the iris a little bit, I think that'll help give the illusion that the eyes are, I mean, it will actually make the eyes more rounded looking. I think that helps actually. Color pencil come through. Oh my gosh, made the wrong line. <gasps> There we go. Okay. Yeah, that's the nice thing about the color pencils is I get a lot of precision with them and I can kind of build out things really slowly and meticulously. The other thing now that's happening is his double eyelid, I made it too thick. There we go. Now his eyes are too rounded. Oh my God. Okay. Now what we need to do is bring in, I think what will help is shadow to deep shadows in the whites of the eyes to kind of make them set a little bit further in the eye, in the face. <laughs> I love that there's always one member who has bleached their hair to death and then one member who has black or dark brown most of the time yes 100 percent. yeah i feel like um yeah right now 
yeah, Mingyu is thrive. Like his scalp is thriving. He hasn't bleached his hair in so long. Um, whereas I feel like Minghao, Jun, they have like yeah, bleached, bleached, bleached their heads a lot. <laughs> The last time I had it color treated was back in October. Oh, for spooky season. I dyed my hair green like Zoro, but now it's blue. Oh my god, I love Zoro. He's probably my favorite. Um, valid. I mean, blue is good too. I love blue. Ooh, yes. Okay. Yep, 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 yep. That helps. That helps. Cause he doesn't have like the big round doughy eyes like like jungkook so that's important and now i think we're at a place where i think we do need to kind of bring in that lower lash line a little bit but like very subtly yeah and then the little water line just like a whisper of bottom lash line i mean lashes Just a teensy bit, yeah. And then the tear duct here. <sighs> Y'all, I did it, I did it, it's Mingyu. Uh, Sungwoo's long hair is so pretty in his upcoming magazine cover, the Gianna boyfriend magazine. Oh my God! Someone get this man some clothes. Like I've seen, I've seen the covers. I've seen uh, clips from the concert. Like, sir, <laughs> he looks amazing. Obviously, as I said, I have Sungwoo brain rot. So. <laughs> I'm going to get my hair cut to your length sometime in the spring right now. It's to my belly button. I just want to change and don't like brushing out knots. <gasps> wow. That's going to be such a, like, you're going to feel so light and relieved. <laughs> um, what's your hair condition? Are you planning to donate it? Amazing. Normal things for K-pop stands to discuss. How is my faves scalp condition? <laughs> Extremely normal things. Extra super normal conversation to have. <laughs> so I get this man so close. I mean, he's like been shirtless all over the place. Like, is he not cold? Is my man not cold? Is mother not cold? As it goes with these live streams, they're, oh, don't you hate when that happens? I hate when that happens. Ugh. Um, but yeah, with these live streams, I become more and more unhinged as it goes on because I get more comfortable with you guys. <laughs> when you have a body like that, you gotta show it off. It's true, it's true. He's blessing our eyeballs. What are your plans for after the stream? I'm definitely binging some of your videos to stay on my art grind while I'm in the moment. Oh my god, yay! I'm so happy for that. Um, after the stream, my friend is coming over and we are going to watch <laughs> Seventeen's Nana Tour. Um, I think actually we're probably gonna, we, we still have a couple episodes of In the Soup season two and then we're gonna watch Nana Tour, which, oh my god, I can't believe I've managed to wait this long. I mean, I've seen like a million clips of it on TikTok, but we're gonna actually watch it in its entirety. So I'm excited. I mean, not entirety, cause I'm, there's like hours and hours of content, but we're gonna actually start watching it. Um, Unhinged is the best, <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> uh, scalp condition, let's ask Rose. Oh my God, yeah, she has been Blonde blonde for a really long time. Oh my god, so true. I mean, she looks good and she's like kind of staying true to the name, but damn, that is commitment.
I'm worried. I'm worried. I'm like maybe overdoing it. So let's be careful. Let's be careful because it's definitely easy to get overzealous and overwork it. So let's make sure I don't do that. Okay. Yeah. Hell yeah, that sounds like a great time then. A day well spent for sure. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Tomorrow, um, we are gonna be going to, there's a Hyunjin cup sleeve event. Uh, and I think there might be a J-Hope and Sugar one as well. Um, so yeah, well, it's a very K-pop filled couple of days for me, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> I actually hadn't thought to donate. I had a balayage four years ago, so the bleach is still on the ends. Most of it is natural. Dirty blonde though, not sure if you're allowed to donate semi-damaged hair. I mean, it might be worth looking into because um, it sounds like you're gonna be uh, chopping off like a fair amount um i think generally the consensus is that it's supposed to be virgin hair but um if some of it's natural then you might be able to donate some of it or they might be able to like use some of it for like a short a short hair look or something i don't know i've actually never donated my hair before because i've um i've just bleached it so often <laughs> But like I love the idea of um, of being able to donate hair, because uh, why not, right? Um, if you can. But I recognize that a lot of us are uh, guilty of bleaching and dyeing our hair. So I mean, not guilty, but we just do it, you know. So we're not eligible to donate, but I like the I like the option for people. It's almost 11 p.m. here, uh, having lots of fun drawing along with you. Yay, I'm so glad. He's looking so handsome. Thank you. It's the only way for Mingyu. It's the only way. <laughs> I think the other thing that I did was I made the eyebrow come in just a tiny bit too much. Like his eyebrows are actually perhaps like a little bit shorter and lighter going in here but I think that's like a that's a paint marker gouache fix if I felt super inclined but it's it's fine like if I wanted to get really nitpicky about it I mean, I could like fiddle around with this for ages, which I think I will um, <laughs> instead of starting a new one, just because I, I don't have enough time, unfortunately, to start um, another one, which sad because I really wanted to get to the Hong Joon, but maybe I'll do it next time uh, since I had so much fun with uh, this K-pop theme. Happy Yungi Day! Yes, yes, our boy. I'd ask them while you're there. It's worth it to ask and check to make sure. Yeah, that's true. Never donated hair, so not sure how it works. I'd give it to my mom because her hair is so fine. Mmm. Yeah, like that's totally true. Like little extensions. Um, I don't think I'd ever have the patience to grow out my hair long enough to donate. <laughs> hello, hello. Just joined. He looks so good. Thank you. Unfortunately, I'm probably gonna go soon. But I'm glad you were able to join for a little bit.
Ah! I keep doing these teeny little things and then... Wild 3C hair problems. Yeah, totally valid. Uh, sometimes when I'm drawing, I take a step back and I'm like, is this really where I put that line? The angles always mess me up when I move. <laughs> totally, yeah. Like, that's I was saying, saying that earlier. Like, it's good to, like, lift the paper up to see because the angles really do look different um like this could be more rounded out i think Hydration reminder. Oh yes, thank you. You're you are correct. <laughs> Hydration reminder, everybody. Easels make so much of a difference. Absolutely, yeah, one hundred percent. Maybe I should do that next time. Maybe I should. Um, I have like a little tabletop easel. Maybe I should do that. And then, if anything, actually, the camera and stuff could probably be slightly further away from me. Um, yeah, I will consider that. Actually, but I'm not sure about my paints and stuffs around it. I don't know. We'll see. But that's worth considering. Plump glowing hydration boost. <laughs> yes. When go away from what you work on, then come back later. That's when you notice what you did wrong. Yes. Yeah. Having like a break from it and coming back with fresh eyes definitely helps as well. For sure. Okay. I'm realizing that the shadow on his, like the shadow under his nose is actually a little bit longer. So let's think a little bit longer like that. And then the lips, I didn't really do, we want some dimension there. And then, oh, actually, I also want to darken the inside of the mouth because those teeth shouldn't be so vibrant. Um, the question is, probably let's do purple since that's the color palette we've got going on here. Yeah, that'll help just sort of like have the teeth actually in the mouth as opposed to like super bright. Excellent, excellent, yes. My hair ended up growing a lot because I keep it in protective styles 90% of the time. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Um, keep your paper in your shoulder square with the paper as you draw and try to only move the drawing arm. Ah, yes, my posture is bad. And I kind of do like angles and stuff sometimes. It's bad. <laughs> Definitely have to keep that in mind. I'm always squirming around my sketchbook. Yes, me too. It suddenly looks so much more like it with the mouth details. Whoa, yay! Isn't it crazy like how those like teeny little tweaks like can make such a difference? And yeah, like I, I love that like now that I have this set up, we can all sort of like um, deduce all these little changes together, um, even if you're not familiar with Mingyu because I have the photo up. That's literally his mouth. <laughs> The essence of Mingyu, it's coming together. Tina, hi, hi Andy. Um, it really helps me when I draw while in a squirrel mood. <laughs> That's, uh, ah, yes, excellent, excellent. I'm feeling good about this, guys. I done did it. Um, I guess the last thing is to throw in this shirt. I think let's um, 
Let's use this filbert or, oh, you know what would be really satisfying? Use this, using this big chunky brush um, just to get that. Yeah, let's do it. That's going to be so delicious. Okay, let's zoom you out a little bit or get us in formation here. I love using this big brush. It's just like so satisfying. So let's get what colors are these? Oh, that's brown. I'm just like mixing everything up. I did not end up using the Paul Rubens palette. I just ended up using this one. That's so funny. This is one of those cases where, uh, yeah, super, super limited color palette, but it totally works. And good example of like, you don't need like a gigantic set of colors. I barely even used, like I used what? The pink, the purple, the blue, the black. Big brush fan here. Woo, yes. Okay, are you ready? It's gonna be really satisfying. If you had to choose a K-pop idol as a champion to fight Tom Nook in a Roman type of duel, who would you pick? He's got some tricks hiding in his tail, so choose wisely. Hmm. Okay, admittedly, I'm not like super familiar with Animal Crossing, but I know Tom Nook is the like brown kind of like raccoony looking guy, right? Um, who would I pick as the champion? Probably San from 80s. I feel like San, he just built to fight, <laughs> I think. And he knows martial arts. And if you've seen him like do his kicks and jumps and like, he's crazy. Like he is wild. Um, <laughs> even if you just see, okay, wait, before I keep talking, let's do this. It's gonna be so delicious or disastrous. I don't know. Um, wow. I purposely wanted to go over it slight over the line slightly just because that's actually what's happening in the piece here or the photo reference is that the the clothes actually do come a little bit closer to his uh his neck or his jawline or whatever honestly i'm not entirely sure how i feel about that but that was so satisfying to do <laughs> I think now that I did that, I feel like I need to give him a background color. I think that's what's going on now. So let's do that. Whoa, so satisfying, right? <laughs> so fun. Okay, let's, for the background color, I'm thinking blue, similar to the reference photo here. So actually maybe I will use the, maybe I will use this palette because I see a blue already right here that I can use. Yellow, yellow, yellow. Oh, yellow would actually be good too because uh, it's the, what's it called? The color opposite to purple, like they're complements. But kind of in a cool, cool tone mood. Also, this is reminding me, I also got a set of your brushes as a gift for Christmas, and this is reminding me I need to use them. They're so gorgeous. Yay! Oh my god, I hope you enjoy using them, Amy. Um, Tina's what, uh, Tina, what's your top three AT songs? <gasps> oh my god. Um, mm, that's so hard. Okay, uh, one of them is Mist. Underrated, in my opinion. I freaking love that song. So please. <laughs> Uh, it's just so, it's just got this like slow R&B vibe, which like they don't do often, but it's delicious. Um, the impossible question, right? Blue is also nice. My fave color. Ooh, yay. The drawing looks so good. Love the vibes. Nice choice. Sorry, I'm not going to be doing yellow guys, but my all time fave will always be the real. Oh, the real is so good. Da -da 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 um, oh my god, this is such a hard decision. Um, hmm. think on it. 
But yeah, Mist is definitely up there for sure. Maybe if our if I went into my Spotify if I went into like my Spotify analytics, they could tell me what I listened to the most. <laughs> that might help me. <laughs> and just like statistically just be like, okay, this is what I listen to. Um Hmm. Hmm. Thinking, thinking. The ultimate hype song. It's so true. Cyberpunk altered my brain chemistry. It came on randomly on my Spotify and I was like, what have they done now? <laughs> I love that K-pop fans or just like fangirls in general, we talk in hyperboles. It's so funny to me. I love it so much. Just fangirls. I think that's why I just get along with like K-pop fans, anime fans, people who just like stan things, like stan culture. <laughs> Healthy stan culture. There's a difference for sure. But it's just like, there's just uh, there's a certain type of feral unhinge energy that I resonate with. <laughs> I've listened to Halazia so much, but it's an out of body experience every single time. LOL, speaking of hyperboles. <laughs> It's the soft ha la 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 Lizia. Um, yes. So good. They're all so good. <sighs> I don't know if I can pick any... Uh, it's like breaking my brain. My Libra brain. Can't decide. I wonder... Hold on. Let me see where my uh, top 2023 20, songs. It was Bouncy for 80s, but I don't think I would classify Bouncy as my fav my top three. Oh, Mist was up there though. Yep, I knew it, Mist. Oh, Halo's, Halozia was up there too. I wasn't expecting that one. Deja Vu, <gasps> Deja Vu, um, All About You. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Gorilla. Wonderland. So many good ones. Healthy, feral, unhinged energy is the only social energy that gives me an introvert life. I'm so glad. <laughs> Also, that soft foggy blue looks so good in the background. Yay, thank you, thank you. Yes, I actually, yeah, it's like this like kind of periwinkle. It's like, well, it looks more periwinkle on camera, but yeah, it's, um, yeah, super, super cool tone. The purple hair is actually really throwing me off. Um, so I think I'm going to have to throw in some watercolors just to like uh, dilute it, because it is actually like, too purple for Mingyu. Like, I don't think Mingyu has ever had this hair color before. Um, so what I'm gonna do is actually use, I think this orange color to kind of gray it out maybe. Ooh, ooh, hold on, let's see. That's really vibrant. That's more vibrant than I expected it to be. Let's see, okay. Isn't that amazing though? The color pencil, the Faber-Castell, it doesn't budge. It's like all those lines are still like super crisp and intact. Okay, on camera, it looks very, it still looks super vibrant. In person, it's starting to look more brown. Um, if anything, I should have went for, I mean, I can just go over it again with like a grayed out kind of like browny color. Now it looks pink to me. Yeah, it definitely looks really pink. It's so vibrant on camera. That's so funny. Uh, this piece looks like it should be under the cherry blossoms on a warm spring day, cold drink in your hand, and about to go get tasty food. If you get me, you get me. Oh my god, that's such a beautiful description. It's so romantic. Went sun red. Oh my god, it did. <laughs> totally. Webtoon. Webtoon be like. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah, that's so funny how that happened. Um, 
Maybe... Do I just go with black? Do I just put black on top, honestly? Sometimes the simplest answer is the one, the right one. It's still super wet, but I might... With the hair, it's okay if it's a little bit, like... We're just gonna... Do, do, do. I don't want to go cl too close to the hairline, because I want to make sure those, um... The brush strokes of the... The hair is still visible, because I think that's really important, but... Jeez. He'd rock that color though. I mean, I definitely think he could do it all for sure. Maybe it's just he he um he really wants to keep his scalp health. <laughs> Maintain his scalp health. <laughs> Which, you know, valid. This adds more contrast, which is nice. Yay, thank you guys. Yes, I'm glad that just gave the that the spark it needed, definitely. Yay! Yes, I think for me, because like as like a fan, like I know visually that he has like hasn't really done like super unique hair colors much. Like it just was like just wasn't just needed needed to read. More is him to, yeah, rock the, the hair color that he normally does, so. You did that so confidently it scared me, but it actually worked, wow. Sometimes it's truly a leap of faith. <laughs> okay, hooray friends, we did it. So sadly we didn't get to do a third one or like a, uh, yeah, the Hong Jun that I initially had planned for but if anything this just leaves room for a part two um that also made the eyebrows look really good oh yay thank you yes i think that really helped because i was saying earlier that the eyebrows look too dark but now in contrast with the hair being darker it actually looks like the correct tone it's so wild how like uh you know relative re relation the th when things are in relation to each other it like changes the value so much um but yes um we want a part two we want it now <laughs> i know right i mean that's why these live streams end up going so long because i like genuinely just have such a good time um but i will be continuing my k-pop shenanigans in real life with my friend um, she said she gets off work at five, so that's why I was like, okay, I need to make sure I get off the stream around five so that I can, like, organize my apartment a tiny bit. It's like, I still haven't, like, fully unpacked from Emerald City Comic Con. My so suitcase is literally completely open on the floor in my living room. <laughs> um, uh, time to celebrate Tina's sketch. Woo, we've been blessed. Yes, Mingyu, my man Mingyu, our man Mingyu, collective, collective. Um, I love that you take the time to chat with us while doing this. Feels like we're hanging out. Have a fun weekend. Thanks, guys. I hope you all have a fun weekend, too. Let me get, like, a, a proper angle here for you guys. We can get, like, a side-by-side, -side too. Oh, also, the disaster of my desk. You can see remnants of it in the edges. Um, so, here we go. I mean, he's looking... Oh, my God. The... Like, seeing it side-by-side -side with the actual photo of him, like... He's so fair, like I made him so pale, like I didn't like commit to, um, dang it. He looks like, it's like, it's like if Mingyu was cosplaying Edward Cullen. gorgeous he looks so good thanks guys i might have to i might have to do like a wash of skin tone <laughs> because it's it's really giving twilight <laughs> oh 
<laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm I'm like literally crying. <laughs> Now that would be a Twilight Renaissance. I know the plot twist. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so sad I missed you in Emerald City Comic Con. I was in Seattle till fall of last year. Please come to. Ow? Am I. Am I. Am I. Is my brain breaking? I'm sad I missed you though. That's such a bummer. Um, it was so nice having you in the background while I was cleaning my craft room and organized my books. Um, also the slight pause before you realize. Did you hear about the alleged Twilight cartoon in Hawaii? Ah, oh my god, I've never been to Hawaii. That sounds amazing. Um, Oahu? Oh, Oahu? Am I saying that right? Um, did you hear? Oh my god, the Twilight cartoon. I freaking can't. Honolulu. Oh, I mean, that sounds amazing, too. I'll keep my brain on the radar for for conventions. Um, Twilight cartoon. That sounds wild. Um, I did hear a rumbling of that, and I thought it was fake. That is insane. <laughs> the Twilight Renaissance is so fascinating to me. Um, Y'all, I can't, I can't get over this. Okay, my friend is... My friend hasn't texted me yet, so I think we have to rem remedy this like immediately. This is driving me crazy. Um, so just kidding, not going just yet. We're gonna, <laughs> this is also a leap of faith, but we're gonna try and do like a full wash of like skin tone because Mingyu is also known for his beautiful tan skin and I just can't deal with this Twilight, Twilight vibe right now. <laughs> I just can't. This is why the live streams go for hours. I know. Oh my god. Okay. I can't deal with this. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. I'm so here for it. Hunger Games is back. Twilight is back. My teen years are coming back to haunt me. Truly. Truly. Yes. Longer the live stream. Okay. I'm scared to like dip into the... My paint water is very dark now because of all the... Oh, that's too much. Hold on. So let's be very careful. Okay. Let's swatch. Okay, way too yellow. Okay. Some red. It's very vibrant. Um, let me Tina, you mad woman. <laughs> the realization after you were done. I know, I think because initially I was like, oh yeah, it's gonna be like pink and purple and it'll be cute and like not photorealistic whatsoever. But then I think once I put in the dark hair, the contrast of his skin tone to his hair is like too stark now. And then with the dark shirt, I was like, oh no, it's Twilight. Um, so the yellow does come to play. It does, you, you were seeing the vision just in a different place um but yeah this is y'all this is like the biggest leap of faith ever let's see what happens if this is disastrous then i have only myself to blame actually let's take a photo just in case <laughs> as evidence okay and then instagram can see twilight mingyu too i called the yellow <laughs> At least you get content out of it. Whenever you're in the year safe, Twilight strikes again. <laughs> oh, now that we have to know uh, the question, everyone in the chat, are you team Edward or team Jacob? Okay, I was team Jacob until the fourth one. Then it was like team nobody because what was that character assassination? Ho oh my god. Okay, are we ready? Okay, let's do the neck first. That's like a safe, that's safer. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Team nobody as well. I'm so scared for you, please. <laughs> Can I see the previous piece you did? I missed it. 
um, Team Van Helsing. Um, the previous one was just a sketch, but it was Jungle from BTS. I did a highlighter and ballpoint pen. It like kind of looks like him. Not fully, but kind of. Um, it looks so good. Thank you, thank you. I'm Team Therapist. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. 100%. Team like, go on a trip. Find yourself. You're 17. Like, come on now. Okay, are we ready? Are we ready? Oh my god. Okay, wait. Let me get more paper paint here. We're gonna do it in like one big go. Team Alucard from Castlevania. Ian, that is absolutely the correct answer. I am, I love Alucard so much. You could do this, Tina. Oh, I thought it was Joshua from 17 on the left. Oh yeah. I could see that actually. Oh yeah, it does look like Joshua. It's the eyes. <laughs> I could see that. Uh, Tina, I was so happy to see you at the con. I hope it went well for you. Oh, thanks, Needy. It was so nice to meet you. You were so sweet. Um, the characters are 17, and I thought my life was dramatic at 17. I know, right? Okay, 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 okay. Team anyone but Bella, not loving the not like the other girls vibes. Yeah, that was definitely of, it of its time, right? <sighs> okay, ready? We're working quickly. We're working... Am I leaving the white highlights? No, we're gonna, we're gonna go over it. We're gonna, we're gonna. What? Oh my God. <gasps> Whoa. I think I could have benefited from maybe this mixture being slightly less yellow. Like it could have went but you know what? It actually kind of gives like a like a sepia tone filter, which is kind of cool. Wow. Yo, that's magic. <laughs> Whoa, the warmth, he's human again. Yeah, no twilight, no twilight up in here. Twilight no more. I think it works well with the pink. Yeah, I think that's what I was thinking too, like going more yellow because the pink undertone. Holy, <laughs> how to unvampire someone. That is magic. Success, yay. What a roller coaster, friends. That was wild. I love that. <laughs> You're so good at color. I should have had faith. Oh, thanks, Amy. I mean, I wasn't. I fully wasn't sure. That's one of those like trust the process moments and like just hope for the best. Um, this is why you're one of the artists I admire because I would have been too scared to fix it and would have left him as a vampire. <laughs> I was tempted. I mean, now I have photo evidence of him as a vampire first, which is so funny. Um, it's like a little fun little in inside joke for all of us. Um, this looks a lot better. All of his beautiful facial features are more visible now. Yeah, I think it just it just works better now. It more it's more Mingyu. Forgive me for not having faith in your excellence, ma'am. <laughs> I forgive you. I forgive you. I mean, I wasn't even sure. I didn't have a lot of faith to be honest. Um, can't believe you found the cure to vampirism in this stream. Wow, women in STEM. <laughs> You did it! The vampire in Twilight just had to use yellow foundation and some color theory. <laughs> and not the blue filter. The blue filter in the first one. <laughs> Crazy how you can work on something for so long and by the end you just make a couple decisions that completely transforms your piece. It's crazy, right? Like, that totally makes it look so different. Like, the dark, like adding the dark hair, like super dark hair, and then that yellow on the skin. Wah. Yeah. Wild. Lots of tink, little tinker, 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 and then just like. <laughs> I love the moody blue filter though with the soundtrack. I mean, it's definitely an era. It was like such a vibe and it's very iconic. So I'm not mad at it. The soundtrack, the soundtrack hits, absolutely. Or the sparkles, I still think that was kind of lame. Oh yeah, the sparkling skin, so funny. Okay, now, now we have Mingyu, not Edward Cullen. Excellent. Oh, it's blowing out. Let me, let me lower the exposure here a little bit. You can get a slightly truer 
view here. <laughs> Mingward Colin. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. It's hard to like get the right angle here for you guys, but not bad. He's like a he's like it's like if Mingyu was in a manhwa. That's kind of the vibe. Like if he was in a webtoon. That's kind of the vibe I'm getting. Team Edward, nah, Team Jacob, nah, Team Mingyu, yes! I love my team. I love my crew. 17 all the way. He looks so good. Thank you, friends. He's gorge, babe. Thank you. Hua Cheng Hu. Hua Cheng Hu. <laughs> Time to go watch Shadow Jakarta Rain Clip on repeat. Yes. 100%. And here's our Joshua Jungkook mixture. <laughs> also a vampire, vampire theme. Let me pull up the photo for you guys who, were, um, who weren't here earlier. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that was the the vampire Jungkook. It always comes back to vampires, doesn't it? Um, vampire 97 line. <laughs> uh, imagine she falls in love with Mingward, then visits his house and the entirety of seven, Vampire 17 is there. Why does this... Are we writing a fanfiction right now? <laughs> An insert yourself fanfic? Oh, vampiro. <laughs> I'm dead, guys. Uh, okay, this was so much fun. I have to go now because I really need to pee and my friend is gonna come and I need to make my apartment look marginally more presentable. Um, <laughs> but this was so much fun. I had a blast. Um, Madlib fanfiction, that JK photo shoot was everything. I know, it lives, lives. Um, okay, I know I just said I was gonna say goodbye, but for you, I will show you the, I did a different one. Where is it? Where is it? Where? Am I going insane? I showed it earlier. I did a vampire Ming, no, vampire jungle. Jungle. At some point. We're getting a really quick sketchbook tour. There you go. There we go. <laughs> I better get credit. <laughs> Somebody is going to put that fanfic on AO3. <laughs> Thank you, Tina. Have a great weekend. Sketchbook is so gorgeous. Just thank you, friends. Oh my god. Yeah. This was so much fun. Um, let me leave you with... Oh, here's another Mingyu. <laughs> Mingyu from the hot music video. Yes. Correct. Correct, correct, correct. Okay, okay. You ate that, thank you. Am I going insane? None of us are licensed professionals, Tina. <laughs> the blind leading the blind. Uh, thanks, Tina, have fun with your friend. I never thought I would sit through a 1.5 hour live stream and not be bored for a single second. It's 4 a.m. Oh my God, it's been 1.5 hours. Y'all, that is insane. No wonder my bladder is gonna burst. I went pee once. Um, Okay, okay, I pro truly, I'm leaving now. I'm so bad at goodbyes. Uh, I had so much fun with you guys. The live stream will be saved and up for you to watch the rest if you weren't here for the whole 4.5 hours. Um, I will, of course, announce when I do the next live stream over on my community tab and on Instagram stories. I don't know when that, <laughs> go be one. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you. Um, and uh, I love you all. You're amazing. And I will see you next time. Bye.